Indeed. Oh, I agree. I'm just saying that's why it's not going to yeah. happen. <laughs> Um, the tiny anarchist in me will come out a little bit. I say I have a tiny anarchist because I don't trust people that much, like, to be a full-blown anarchist. <laughs> like, whoa, well, now. Like, I don't like this day, but I don't think we would do any better. <laughs> well, thank you for coming, guys. This Always. Is, I was looking forward to tonight. Uh, I, today was kind of a rough day. Sorry, man. What happened? Oh, it was just... It was just hard. That's all. Yeah. And it was kind of like... It was It was definitely getting to me. I was getting, like, internally very angry with customers. Um, I don't ever really let it show, but it was, like, really frustrating me. So I'm glad to be moving on to something else today. They are the worst. Hey, Do you hear that, Dan? I did. It was long overdue. I meant to get it cut back in April, and then I got that head injury. Mm. Oh, yeah. Look yes. sharp, bud. Well, thank you. I like it. I need it. a good one this weekend. I was going to wear my uh, my costume for DMing again, but it's like 80 degrees in here, so I'm <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> Uh, I'll have to do it. People save that for the winter time. <laughs> right. I've been telling people that I'm turning into one of you dirty Yankees because I've already have my portable AC up in my room. <laughs> hey, listen, to be a Yankee, you have to be an American, and that excludes me. <laughs> right, you're just a no. West Northwestern Canadian. <laughs> I uh, I was talking with somebody the other night, and I said something about like, ah, if it's not hockey, you don't really care about it as a sport. <laughs> And she said, what are you, Canadian? And I said, like, well, Alaska is so, like, angry Canada. <laughs> also accepting uh, Quebec is angry Canada. Yes. Except they're Eastern angry Canada, Canadian. The French-speaking province? Yeah, yeah, they, um, now, they have they a lot still of trying to, Are they still trying to succeed from Canada or, like, just become more autonomous? I don't know. They they are really, really proud of their heritage and their tradition and history. So in that province, it's required by law that you learn French first, and then you then you go to English immersion after that. I believe it is. So they they learn French uh, mm -hmm. because <clears throat> that's required, and then yeah, I know like other signs and stuff. Yeah, there's like certain things that you're only allowed to do in French, I believe. When you're a child, that is. It's weird. Um, I know that's like a few years ago, Scotland wanted to succeed from the crown. And when you looked at what they wanted to do, it was all about like their culture and heritage and stuff, right? And there's enough Scottish people to be like, yeah, but we, it's, not enough, it's not enough to like make our own currency. Right. Right, like with so much more work, and I was like, we already see you as Scottish. Right, okay, like no one confuses like Scottish pipes, people with English people. Bagpipes aren't English. Your accents, not English. Your whiskey, not English. So you already have all that. <laughs> I feel the same way about Quebec. So it's like <laughs> if you are trying to succeed, like you already have everything you want. A lot of real Canadians really, really don't like Quebec for that, for like, for that reason. They're trying, they're like constantly trying to legislate and force like their politics on like their like cultural things on the rest of Canada. And uh, a lot of, a lot, especially like in like BC and Yukon, not very friendly toward Quebec. All right. I got to switch my laundry. I'll be back in just a second. No problem. We're going to wait a little bit for her to be ready. <laughs> uh, we were just discussing uh, the sheep uh, since she's interested in getting some. It's going to be pretty cool. They're, my flock is turning out really nicely right now. I'm happy. I'm very happy for you. <laughs> well, thank you. It's So when you say you're just going to do summer sheep, does that mean you'll like slaughter them in the fall and then get new ones in the spring? Yeah, yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. Awesome. Uh, I think I, it, it's possible I could make the switch to hair sheep then. Uh, they have uh, slightly better, uh, 
characteristics in some ways, and, and the wool is not profitable. So, it's, uh, I don't need the wool for these sheep. They're probably not going to get shorn. Uh, they're probably just going to get go to slaughter. Um, maybe if I can shear them myself, I might keep the wool, but I'm not sure. If that's the case, there's a there's a wool dealer nearby, and I could just like put it in a uh, in like a canvas bale, and then just take it there and sell it, and I'll probably make all of like fifteen dollars. <laughs> Oh, you have to tell me how delicious the mutton is. Oh, absolutely, I will. I'm looking forward and to share that. any good recipes you get. Yeah, the so like... folks I'm good friends with uh, make it into sausage a lot, and it's really good in sausage. That, I bet, I bet that's good. I don't like. I love lamb. Lamb's delicious. So I'm guessing sheep is probably pretty good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my, uh, my sheep are currently, well, they were 40 pounds last Monday, and I'm sure they put <coughs> weight, but they're going to be slaughter weight at, at 90 pounds, so they're roughly halfway there. That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, and I made, managed to get them by, by trading labor for sheep, so. Good move. No, no dollars necessary. Don't tell the feds. <laughs> no taxation no without documentation. You're free. <laughs> this is one of the reasons I like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, so I, um, I have all of you on D and D Beyond now. It looks like, which is good, and. I made a token for you, Zach, using your character's image on D&D Beyond. Sweet. Which is... he's, a uh, Interesting. I what made him that? in Hero Forge. Oh, very cool. I have a boatload of them that I've made in Hero Forge. It's free to make them. You just have uh -huh. to pay if you actually want to, like, buy them. So I got, like, I probably got 15 or 20 minis that I've made. Just like, eh, I'm bored. I'm going to make something Hero Forge. Uh -huh. And now, like, uh, well, not now, but a few years ago they added so you can, like, paint them and color them, whereas before you could just, like, customize the mini. So now you can, like, add coloration. Oh. So which they Which is pretty make, cool. So what, do they 3D print them if you buy them? I assume they 3D print them and then paint them. I, I don't know how that works. So I know they 3D print them because you can also, if you have your own printer, you can buy like the blueprint, I guess, the, oh, the yeah. 3D printer file for like a lot cheaper. You can also get metal ones made if you want to really shell out. Whoa. But it goes from like $25 for a mini to like $55 if you want to go to metal. Ooh. That's yeah. pretty expensive for something that's just going to sit on my desk. I'm assuming they have a metal 3D printer, Man, those which are cool. they're so cool. I think they use some form of electrolysis, I think, in order to like actually take a, uh, what would you call it? They take like this fluid that has metal in it, and then they use electrical charges to build it up with the printer head. It's super That makes cool. sense. I had, like, watched a video on it years ago. <laughs> when I, um, when I start making adult money, um, <laughs> that's gonna be, like, one of the hobbies that I get into is 3D printing. I have a tiny bit of, of like, CAD experience, um, and I got a free program that I, like, jump on every now and then and brush up, um, but... I want to, like, take a class and get a decent 3D printer and a decent, like, software system you can and actually do, start, like, learning how to really make stuff. You can really do a lot of that in Blender. And Blender's free, and there's tutorials really? everywhere. Yeah. 
Blender is incredibly powerful and, and you, uh, versatile. Like, I used Blender no. to make 3D maps for my Stargate campaign for a little while before I realized it was just kind of too much work for me as a DM. Um, mm -hmm. But you can, you can make animations, movies, you can make uh, 3D files that you can export to another program for free and turn it into G-code, which goes in, is what you feed into your 3D printer. Okay. So with a little bit of understanding of Blender and then the converter software, you can 3D print for free. Yeah, and there are nice. some people who made some plugins for Blender that makes it more like CAD software. Nice. Yeah, don't you use Blender for her stuff? I do. Not for CAD, not for the CAD related stuff, but I do have done a little bit of a lot of things. But you could actually do video editing on it too. And um... Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you could do amazing. things where like you'll you could actually take like a video that you're recording something and you know nothing is there and if you have enough tracker points you can just you know get those get rid of those tracker points and then make like as if the uh thing is there like a movie does <laughs> like the actual wow. thing is there wow <clears throat> really cool and it's it, it's amazing that software like that is free yeah free and open source they had i mean they were fighting for like many years <laughs> for <laughs> a lot of this stuff until finally they made some progress or some big progress in certain things but um yeah like it they were probably working for probably like 10 or 20 years on that at this point they're just trying to like release patents so that they can use them <laughs> uh more so just trying to you know make the software while also having a life <laughs> You know, that makes sense. job because you know it's free software, so you have to rely on donations. So, but these donations, you know, it can only go so far. It is free and open source, so anyone can contribute to it. So that does help, but it's still a ton of time. Um, back in I uh, like 2018, probably they released a huge uh, patch that made the program a lot more user user friendly to use. It didn't really change too much in how it worked, but it made it a lot more user friendly. And tons of big companies realized how good it actually was and started donating lots of money to them. So now they're making some really good progress now. That's awesome. Very cool. I should get back into Blender. I learned on an older version, like several years old. So yep. I'm out of the loop. I mean, normally I'd say, you know, stay out of the blender, but that sounds fun. <laughs> uh, is Liz back? I thought I saw her there. She I came am. in and grabbed her burger. Sorry, oh, I'd forgotten awesome. my quarters earlier, so that's why it took so long. Oh, that's okay. Um, I promise I'm back now. I have Soundtail up and Roll20 up, and... We will pick up where we left off last time. You, the players, Gedlin and Valmira, started last session journeying from a certain port in Waterdeep, with their destination being Chult. Upon the, their embarkation, uh, the party ended up meeting a few of the sailors aboard their ship and learning the name, learning some of the destinations that you would be stopping at along the way. You made port in Dagger... Oh, shoot, what's it called again? Daggerford. I almost Dagger called it Daggerford. I almost said Daggerfall. That's from Elder Scrolls. Um, but yeah, Daggerford. Uh, in order to get some supplies, you know, that you hadn't gone very far so far on that trip. Uh, and you had a lovely evening at a local tavern. Uh, Gedland tried his hand at a little bit of uh, fantasy uh, uh, Yahtzee. <laughs> that I was totally not Yahtzee, but um, I changed the rules. It's fine. Uh, casting lots. He's having a good time. Having a few drinks, having some lamb chops. Uh, and then you uh, re embarked 
with your next destination to be Mintarn. Along the way, you were discovered by a pirate ship and it attempted to board you. Uh, but the <laughs> the bold and courageous party that they are cast flight on themselves, flew over to the other ship, completely wrecked them, and then your crew uh, was emboldened by uh, the act, set fire to the pirate ship, and uh, seriously damaged its hull. You came back to the ship. It was lost in your wake. You then passed nearby to... Hang on, I got to get the name. I just forgot the name. Uh, you pa j passed closely by Skaduruk Island, uh, where the Great Red Dra Great Red Ancient Dragon Hundar lives. Uh, some of the crew were quite afraid of what may uh, possibly happen if he were to emerge, but nothing happened. Passed by uneventfully, giving it a wide berth. At which point, it was only a short journey to Mintarn. You started exploring the city, and you sought out the Dream Archive. That's the word. The Dream Archive. You went in, and Amano, I believe his name was, um, the, uh, the sort of the, the caretaker of the Dream Archive, uh, guided you in your quest for information, found a secret recipe for some ale, and learned some cryptic meaning from staring into the dream pool. And that is where we left off. <clears throat> um, only addition to that is I would make would be that the recipe was specifically... A lost family recipe from oh, yes. my family. <laughs> yes, it was a it was a very valuable recipe, uh, one that uh, Gedlin maybe didn't know he was searching for. He rarely knows what he's searching for. He's just doing his thing. <laughs> I don't know why, but all of a sudden, uh, Cotton Eye Joe just jumped, like, came into my head thinking about Gedlin, and now I'm. <laughs> I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Oh, where did you, you come, come from? from? Uh, and if I cared about monetization, it would be gone. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's right. You can't do stuff like that if you're trying to like monetize, can you? Right, but we don't care because this is a friendly friend D and D recording. This is just for. Just for my own pleasure of, of viewing later. Okay. Which I might add is actually really helpful for GM planning. Watching back really helps me out. What would you like to do? I would. I think if, if there was one thing that I may have forgotten to mention at the end of last session, it was that it was definitely um, like getting close to dusk by the time you were coming out of the Dream Archive. Ooh, okay, sorry. I forgot to enter the map. Launch game. I am open. Sorry, I'm getting into roll 20 right now. If it's getting to dusky time, I might uh, try to go find a nice tavern. Um, see what, what can be done there. Uh, I'm not. Go ahead. If I'm not mistaken, this is just one stop in a substantial journey on our way to Chult, correct? This is correct, yes. Okay. I'm in, I mean, I would like to keep my, my ears open for <sighs> opportunities to make coin, as this is turning into a larger adventure than I had initially planned for when I set sail. Um, and I'm probably going to want more supplies to venture out into the jungles of Cholt than I was to, like, bum around port towns looking for tasty food. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Um, um, I feel like but... okay, I'm trying to get into the map. There was something I wanted to do, but I can't. Quick note, uh, if you want the sounds, uh, the room number is posted in the Roll20 chat. I'm gonna try that again. I'm trying to remember why. Okay. So the, the issue you were having with Roll20, Liz, is it wants you to log in. You don't have to. You can just exit it out, and then it gives you the option to just listen. Into okay, yeah. I'm going to try again, too, because I realize I'm now logged in on the... Anyway, I'll tell you about it later. But, yeah, I have to use Google to, there we go, so I want that is, to do the Roll20 in the arrays. So you, I'll try uh, again while we play. With a, a little bit of searching, find a tavern uh, along the road uh, with the sign that says the Two Doors Tavern. The Two Doors Tavern? That's right. Right. I will definitely uh, check out this Two Doors Tavern. The weird thing about it is as you approach what would have been the doorway, it splits off into two directions and you, there are two separate doors. Um, there is, there's one uh, on the left that says, uh, okay, I have to roll for this. Here. Uh, the left sign says locals, and the right sign says out of towners. Seems disrespectful, but I'll go with the out of towners. I'm just gonna hold on. I'm gonna stick my head in the door first. Like, wait, wait, wait. Just gonna open the door and see what I see and stand in the doorway. Are you looking at the locals or the out of towners side? Out of towners. Okay. Um, you look inside and you see several tables set up, a fireplace. It seems like uh, the building kind of wraps around in almost like a C shape. So it's, a, it's don't immediately see everything inside of the building. Okay, looks good enough to me, I guess. And I walk in. Um, after scoping out the out of towner section. I would like to stealth over to the locals and see if they're uh, upcharging us on drinks. <laughs> I suspect they are. <laughs> uh, I'm going to follow you and make sure. You better be you stealthy get... if you're following me, Mrs. Loud, Clanky Armor. No, I'll stay outside the door. I just want to be over there in case anything goes down. Okay, so and then I'll just... come in like the knight in shining armor that I am. Quick, quick uh, aside. Game in shining armor. The sign says, once you pick a side, you may not switch. So, does that change how you act? I'm going to look at, at uh, Valmir and be like, Val, this is just one stop on our journey. How do we feel about getting kicked out of this tavern? Is that is that going to be, it's like going to uh, ruffle uh, any feathers if I happen to get us kicked out? And say you do you, boo. All right, I'm gonna stealth over there and check it out anyway. <laughs> okay, let's get a stealth check then. Not terrible. Fifteen. Okay. As far as you can tell, no one has noticed your quick switch. Was you briefly were on the out of towner side? Yeah, just enough to get a lay of the land and like. Check out the prices and, 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 and you know, like, hear, hear how much a flag and a veil is and dip so, over to see if the other side has better stuff. Is Valmira with you on the same side? I think she said she's going to lay low outside. For a minute. I like, if I, don't, if I don't hear anything after, like, a minute or so, then I'll uh, try and follow him in. There, there's no scuffle, nothing. Nobody, uh, nobody approaches Gedlin. Okay, well, I'm not going to stealth in, but I am going to, like, try, I guess maybe, like, a performance check. You know, like, the saying, if you're not acting like you're doing anything wrong, you're not? Uh-oh. I'll take like, it. If you don't act like you didn't open your character sheet, then you did. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> what role would you like for that when I get there? 
Well, I mean, there is a performance check. So if you wanted to do that, this is what it sounded like you were saying? Yeah. Um, I have it up for you. Performance is a plus three. I got it. There we go. Ooh, tw how does 21 do me? That's fantastic. There you um, go. Similarly, uh, nobody bats an eye at you coming in the locals side of the tavern. It's not initially. Um, the there's there's a group of six tables immediately upon entering. Um, we'll say just for simplicity's sake, if that was the that would be like the east side of the building, and as you walk north. You see a, uh, a raging fireplace, and then to the right, there are two long sets of tables. And those long sets of tables have stools at them, and they're, they're, they're like 20 foot long, or like 50 foot long tables. Uh, okay. Just, just full of people, ale everywhere. Quite a busy tavern. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to saddle up to the tables or possibly the bar and uh, act like I belong. Okay. You hear a ding, 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 and a man steps up and uh, he says, hear ye, hear ye. Uh, tonight's revels will be... Roll again. Second here. <laughs> Tonight's revels will be arm wrestling. And uh, uh, two dwarves that are sitting on the uh, out of the the out of towner side uh, both stand up at the same time, look at each other with like serious face, and then they go up to a special place at the table. And start arm wrestling, and you just see like the sweat just like rolling down their their uh, foreheads as they're putting all of their dwarven girth into it. Just hey, hey, and uh, a couple a couple people at, at the uh, the same table they came from are are cheering them on, and one of them says he's cheating. Points to uh, dwarf number two as he's got his other arm beneath the table, using it to pull him just a little bit. And the man who started all of the all of the excitement by announcing the uh, the revel uh, goes over and calls it a dis disqualification for number two. Number one gets a sack of uh, coins, and number two looks definitely very disappointed as they go back to the table. Does this look like a sizable st sack of coins? No, it's probably just uh, it's probably just a little bit of coin, but there's a it's a prize for winning. Uh, is uh, is is Valmira anywhere near me? I'm right next to you, hopefully. Excellent. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at someone and be like, I bet you she can take anybody here. <laughs> I'm gonna look at you and look at everybody, and then look at me and then look at you. So, but do I want to take it? Come on up, you can come on up. You got this. I'm, I want to try to like place some bets. Try to. I'm trying to do a little uh, little I'm bookie gonna, action. As I walk up, I'm gonna turn around and mouth to him like you owe me one, but like mouthing it. I'm gonna cut you in. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Got this. Okay. The okay. So, I've ever met in my life. you walk up, and your opponent is a fair and somewhat tall elf, elven man, who s sits down on the other side of the table. And the rules are as follows: you get a best of three contested strength check, and whoever wins that wins the arm wrestling and you get an unknown quantity of coin as a prize. I, w I would like to place bets with the, with the with the people around me. Side bets to see if I can get anybody to bet against Valerie. A man or Valmira, uh, bets sorry. Uh, two, two silver against Valmira. 
Oh, I'll definitely take two silver. Um, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna like talk to him like, ah, I would like to make it. I would like to make a persuasion check to try to convince people to bet with me, to bet against Val. Like what? You, you guys? Nobody else thinks that the, the big elf can take the halfling. Come on, what are you guys? What's this? <laughs> Uh, you hear a bunch of uh, you hear a bunch of people squabbling on the other side, and uh, it, it seems like the total amount of betting against Velmira is probably only like three silver amongst the two tables. Okay, I'll, I'll still I'll still I'll take it take it. Could be better, but um, yeah, Velmira, let's have you roll a strength check. <laughs> Oh, Amir is like the strongest person I've ever met, so. <laughs> that is not a success. I didn't he, think that. <laughs> he gained some ground, and you're struggling. You gotta make up for. Uh, I bet I his, do. His strong, strong start. Let's see what your next roll is. All right. <laughs> a 17 Ooh, any better? You you make excellent headway and you you've now got him on the defense. To have another roll. That's my girl! Oh! Oh, I thought it was gonna be a four, but it's a one. Bam. Oh, I thought it was gonna be a four for two seconds. You slam his like hand down on, on the table. No, Bam! Like an actual surprise yelp. <laughs> Bam! His hands down on the table with so much force that the guy actually flips out of his chair and falls on his butt on the floor. Looks up at you with a dazed look. Uh, let's go of your hand, which is significantly challenging for him. Well, I want to like, reach down and like help him up. <laughs> he's uh, he yeah, no, his his uh, he's kind of tweaked his arm a little bit. He's like, ow, ow, ah, you didn't have to go so hard. You shouldn't have fought me so hard. I'm going up to everybody. I bet with like, I'll take that, thank you, and I'll take that, thank you, and I'll take that, thank you. I'm gonna bow to everyone that he's collecting money from. <laughs> and I say we stroll out the front door because someone's gonna get pissed. <laughs> we just got here. No. We just got here. No, we live here. We live here. You just don't know us. We live here. Right. Right. I think Listen, I... I'm a native son of every am cavern, gonna... so... <laughs> am I going to need a performance check for that one? Maybe a deception check if you're trying to tell people you're from here. Huh. I'm a native citizen of every tavern. Th that's I'm just inherently his friend. not a I'm lie. not going to try and lie to people. <laughs> I'm just his friend. He invited me. <laughs> uh... Yeah, the the bartender walks up and says, "Yeah, I haven't seen you around these parts. What can I get for you?" What is your best wine, sir? He offers you a blueberry merlot, <coughs> which is in fact what I am drinking tonight. Looks good. Very nice. Oh, Barefoot's these... always a good solid one. Yeah. You want like a gig cheap wine? Barefoot. It's a good price point wine for sure. You know, I just wanted something that I could sip on. I didn't need to be good. But it's kind of good. That's exactly what Barefoot's around for. I, I was hoping it'd be a little sweeter, but it's okay. Um, yeah, he, uh, he brings over to... Uh, I don't know if they would put it in flagons, but I'm going to say they put it in flagons. Flagons of wine. Because this flagons is a, of wine. This is a uh, very rough and rough around the edges type of tavern. An inn that serves wine in a flagon glass. This is my kind of place. <laughs> uh, What's the damage, good barkeep? Uh, let's see. It would be... Uh, what is the expense? Oh, here we go. Um, 
two silver for both of them. Just a total two silver. And then he brings over, courtesy uh, of the ta the Two Doors Tavern, he brings over a plate of hard tack and gravy. So. Well, Val, our side bed covered our drinks. <laughs> Uh, You're another... meeting, Zach, another... I'm going to start calling... You have to remember that my character's name is Valmira, because if I start calling myself Valerie, I might be actually a little mad at you. <laughs> no, I've been calling you Val. I know, that's fine, but I almost called myself Valerie. <laughs> um, Valmira, <laughs> I feel like Valmira has eaten her good amount of hardtack in the day. Like She might be like a hardtack connoisseur. I'm gonna start telling. Uh, I'll start telling uh, Gedlin some battle stories. Like, oh, at the battle of this and this, we had hard tech, but there was like this good cinnamon stuff inside of it. Like how you hear like Bet talk about MREs. <laughs> like, you, need, you need to get you need to get the peanut hard to peanut butter hard tech. Those are the best. The chocolate ones sound good, not. Okay. I'm just munching away on my hard tech. All of a sudden, and dipping it in my wine like a heathen. <laughs> as you're as you're this sitting you talking, all of a sudden you hear a a boom, and the crowd dies down significantly. And you see a dagger in the table between the two of you, with a muscular hand around it. Oh, I'm already turned around. I'm already I'm already facing the person. This is what I'm here for, boys. <sighs> Who is it? I yell oh, little, yeah, I want to see your young children get out of my seat. Who? There is a tall, piratey looking man uh, standing behind you. He's got his tricorn hat on. He's definitely very disheveled. He's got for sure like the the type of like Pirates of the Caribbean uh, dreadlock hair type of thing going on. Eye patch, you know, the, the whole nine yards stinks to high heaven like seawater and shellfish. Um, I would like to yeah, I, I, summon my tell... packed we weapon and like level and hat him and be like, do you want to reconsider that? You didn't really tell us which one of us is in your seat. Oh, that's not the sound I was going for. Did you want to sit in between us? If you come right here and sit in between us, and I pat like the little half a seat next to me, I bet you'd fit. If you buy me drinks, I might sit on your lap. <laughs> oh! Uh, but it's gonna take a lot of drinks and a shower. One more. Um, the people around you have actually kind of slid over a little bit, and. Uh, Maybe a, a little bit of uh, regard for someone who seems to carry some weight, at least around these parts. And uh, he, can I uh, make a quick perception check to look around and see, like, what everybody else is, like, what their sure. reactions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, while you do that, I'm going to describe. <laughs> he he also oh, pushes aside his coat, and you see the hilt of a flintlock pistol on his belt. I am not afraid. <laughs> One second. Everybody pause, pause, pause. Okay, no problem. I need to get this music see if I situated. Can do something. This is not. I would like to, sound. like. If what, there's a... peck would, what check would I do to see how, like, quickly I can move? Like, it's not stealth, but it would be, like. What is, like, literally, like, quick of hand? Oh, like. Slide of hand? Not slide of hand, because I'm not trying to trick them. It just, like, it'd be one of the dexterity checks, so yeah. maybe like acrobatics. If I wanted to like disarm him with the guy, like, the gun, so I oh, like can just like pop it forward and take it from their hand. I would call that sleight of hand in this case. Damn. Is the uh, barkeep anywhere nearby? Never mind. I'm not going to look. Yeah. Yeah, he's at the oh, other end of yeah. the table, and he. Uh, He's holding the 
the jug of whatever it was he was holding in his hands, uh, and he's staring solemnly in your direction. I'd like to ask him uh, if everybody got quiet at least like, is it going to be a problem if this guy dies in a bar fight? Are you saying that out loud? Yes. Okay, well, hold on, Dan, before you answer, I don't know, I'm not trying to, like, butt in, but, like, I made a 19 on my perception check to see what everybody else is doing. I oh, did okay. not realize he was going to do that. Uh, a lot I want to know if this is going to be, like, the last pirate town we were in. People are shrinking back out, and out of self-preservation. <laughs> okay, so what's going through Valmira's mind right now is that he's probably caused a problem for this whole community, right? Or he's so, the freaking sheriff. We don't know. <laughs> well, like, they're not coming to his defense. I know that. The bartender is going to basically not respond other than say, whatever mess you clean up. Whatever mess we'll clean up will mate, I say. As I take my battle axe and swoop <laughs> up across his chest. Oh, you're going to slice his chest open from a seated yep. position. Okay. Because I think he's very close to me, right? Like, we're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. No, he's... So he's... I'm going to take it with, like, two hands to, like, really put some drive behind it. Like, imagine, like, splitting wood, but going the opposite direction. Oh, man. I that, that can f just feel what that would do to my back in real life. Can I roll that with advantage? I was thinking disadvantage because you're seated. Ah... Uh... How about no advantage because you're awesome? <laughs> Do you have inspiration? I don't. This it's gonna have to be disadvantage. I'm sorry. It's just okay. it's stacked against you. He has the. A high girl's ground. gotta ask, right? <laughs> right. I don't blame you for asking. Does a seventeen hit? Oh, uh, I gotta check because I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> Um, one second, please. Uh-oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so impulsive. Oh my god, Liz just stepped in. <laughs> I would have never done this. Can I take everything back? This is dumb. Too late. Uh, would hate me. It's definitely too late. <laughs> I haven't took most of my medication today. I think this power is getting to Liz. You hit him. Oh, Let's see, thank God, see what your least. damage is. Alright, so how about third character is a charm, right? <laughs> Hold on, I know there's a lot with this. So that's 13. And then. I'm going to channel divinity with sacred weapon. So to that 13, for one minute, I get to add three to attack. So that's 16. Smite, 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 smite. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to take my extra attack. All right, so that's 16. One second, I got to get my my things out so I can keep track of how many moves I'm making. Um, <laughs> leave me alone, I'm dead. It's funny, you've so, probably been in this tavern for all of ten minutes. Ten seconds, yeah, we're gonna have to go soon. Um, <laughs> Liz was not expecting this. But, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so I've got 16 for my first, and then I'm gonna come back with an extra attack, so when I swipe up, I'm gonna flip the battle axe around and come back down. Whoa! Um... But, like, maybe on the opposite side, so it's, like, cutting an X or just, like, really chopping in them. I don't know. Okay. Well, I would think you probably had to stand in order to do the initial attack, so you the can first roll one, right. with just normally for the second attack. Okay, cool. Uh, wow. Okay, so that's, 16, that's another hit. And then I get to add a plus three. Oh, no, no, no that's a hit. Right, right, right. Okay, sorry. Wow. So then this time... That's a 10 plus 3, so there's 13. So I just run around to this for a minute. And then I am going to use Divine Smite coming down when I come down. So then you hit with a melee weapon. You can extend one spell slot 
to deal 2d8 extra radiant punch damage to the target, plus 1d8 for each spell higher than first. I don't know what that means. So I'm just going to do another 2d8. Uh, but that's with a plus three. This was a bad idea. So you've done 23, and then you're rolling another 3d8? Is that right? One second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I rolled 19, then 13. So that's 15 plus three. It's 18 damage. Another 18? Another 18. So that's 16 yeah, so... damage with the first strike, 13 with the second, and then another 18 with the divine spine on top of it. Whoo! Dang. All right, that was quite the, quite the first attack. Um, he's going to. I want to do him good if we're gonna. Like, right. No, totally. If I'm gonna pick a fight with, <laughs> I need to get it like the best is through the first step. Uh, he's gonna say, "I'll gut you like a fish." Never should have come here. Um. Is that and... before or after I hit him? <laughs> That was while you were hitting him, I guess. I don't I'll know. Get to it. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't know the answer, just just uh, take the middle ground. All right, he's Maybe going to. Go. I'm gonna roll. He attacks, and then uh, Gedlin can come on in. He's still alive. Like. Yeah. Does a does an eleven hit? Me no. Didn't think so. All right, he fires off his flintlock. And the shot goes into the table on the other side, and people scream and scatter, and everybody leaves the tavern. I just want to, like, hold his eye contact the whole time. I'll do, like, a constitution save. I don't care. Yeah. And that is his turn. <clears throat> Dead Island. I will the whole use time. my bonus action to place a Hexblade's curse on him. As I say, I curse you, you moon faced assassin of joy. And uh, <laughs> I now get plus three bonus to damage rolls, score critical on a 19 or 20. And if he dies, I get plus three, I get 10 extra hit points. Ooh. Uh, and then I am going to dab him real hard. So you said, sorry, did you just say he had to make a, a saving throw? Nope, no saving throw. He's just cursed. Okay. Um, does a 14 hit? It does not. Real roll because it's a natural one. Does a 15, oh no, sorry, does an 18 hit? Yes. Uh, that will be eight points of piercing damage as I skewer him with my packed weapon. I poke him in the bloody side. Deck him. Sick him to poke. Uh, <laughs> Poor to evoke. Poor to evoke. Too soon, man. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, he's still standing. Uh, back to <laughs> Valmira. Not for long. We're not. We're not worried. We're not worried, Val. We got this. <laughs> Can't be another TPK. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go with my normal like home run batter stance. Take out the middle. Full asterisk. So, Go for it. Let's do all of this for 10 rounds. Don't be afraid to hit him with the halfling hello. <laughs> Should have done that coming up. Maybe next time. Follow it up with a uh, second breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> 17 hit? That's a hit. All right. And then plus three, that's pretty low, ten. And then coming back the other direction for my second attack. 
to the 20 hit. Oh, yeah. A natural 20. I think that's a, a, na a natural that, 20? An that, that, unnatural 20. I rolled a 14, but I have a We need to say modified or dirty. Eli started some bad habits. <laughs> he did. <laughs> okay, so 13, 16 damage on that one. That's 26 damage. Dang. Wow. 20, you said 26? Yeah. Um, okay. How do you want to do this? Um, okay, so after Skeleton comes in and pokes him in the side, I think what I want to do is just like make another little swipe, and that was the first one, and then just take my battle axe around and bump him on the head. <laughs> uh,. Like, I don't feel like cleaning this more our blood up, because we are going to have to sit here and clean all the stuff up. You move the body, I'll clean the blood, girl. We're going to have to do the dishes, man. I nah, say that I as he goes down. As he hits the floor, Valmira looks at Gettel and says, we're going to have to do the dishes. Nah, I got this, and I will cast Prestigitation <gasps> to clean up any blood in the area. Ooh, Ooh, fantastic. In that case, uh, I will carry him out on my shoulder like a sack That's of That's my girl. But I'm a halfling, so I can't really carry him like a sack of taters. So I just have like one hip on my shoulder. Like a, <laughs> like a boss, right? Like a boss. Um, And both feet kind of up. And I'm just like, his, his hip is draped over my shoulder. But I'm just dragging him back, right? So like his, his head is like popping against the ground. Like it's really <laughs> Like, I'm not told enough to pocket. actually do it. Oh, Check you're right. Pocket. You're right. Take his, take his jacket off. Take his jacket off. I want that fancy thing he used. The, the other pirates had one of those. We're going to hurry up before we're bringing more to look at and We're just going to strip him down <laughs> <laughs> and throw him in the, the tall grass. Uh, can I do an investigation check? I want to investigate his flint lock and see if I can figure out how that works. Say that one more time. I would like to do an investigation check. I want to pick up his flint lock and see if I can... Figure out how that works. Oh, Ooh, yeah, because I hadn't seen good. them like, until yeah. I ran into the pirates. They're cannons. I know plenty of people who fight with these. You're gonna love. This. Um. Okay. So yes, there's the flintlock. There's a pouch of thirteen uh, smooth bore uh, flintlock. Uh, what do you call them? Balls. I guess lead balls. Oh, no, um, they're not bullets. I, yeah, I mean, they are bullets. Called. But yeah, uh, it's what you would put in like muskets. Yeah. And there's a shot. horn on his. Yeah, shot. That's exactly what it, I should have said. There's also a horn on his hip that is full of gunpowder, and then there's a, a ramrod on the flintlock along with uh, a rag in his pocket. Uh, so that's all you would need in order to use a flintlock. Now, with, uh, I think, a long rest of actually investigating, uh, you like, actual an actual investigation check, um, once you get a success on that on a long rest, then you'll know how to use it. Otherwise, you're just kind of, like, not sure exactly how it actuates. Um, and then you'd be free to use it at, as you please. Um, so if you don't make it on the first long rest, you'd have to try on the next one, is what I'm trying to say. Um, okay. There's also a, uh, a bottle of liquid uh, that is in his uh, on his belt. Uh, it's held up with like a, a leather strap. Ooh, mystery liquid. Yes. It's a slight uh, bluish, bluish tinge. Uh, Val, do you want to take a look at this? I'll try it. I'll try and lick it. Just All like right. a little teeny bit. Just like the top little, of my tongue. Little potions test, right? Just a little, just a little get the flavor. To like the smallest drop that'll fit on my fingers. Just a tip. Um, another thing you find in his pocket is a, uh, a wooden... Six-sided die, so a D6. It seems to be ornately painted. 
I'm gonna like kind of like roll around my hand, see if it's like loaded, if it feels like it's a little heavy on one side or not. Yeah, it's interesting. As you as you mess around with it and roll with it, it takes you a few minutes. Uh, of just kind of like fumbling with it, just um, fidgeting, and then um, you're you're looking around the tavern and uh, you you see like in front of you. The bartender has a tray with six mugs of ale, and he and you roll the die, and you look down and it rolls a six. <laughs> then you try, you look around and you see another number. See uh, three men sitting around uh, the table, and you roll the die, and it doesn't roll a three. It rolls something else. It rolls a random number. And you get curious about it, and you you think to yourself the number six, and you roll the die, and it rolls another six. Ooh, we're keeping this boy. Put that in the front. Oh, um, I should alter that. Sorry, it did roll the three. I misread the or misread how it works. Okay, so basically, whenever you roll this d6, you can control which number it rolls, and the name of it is the charlatan's die. So if you can find that on roll 20, you can add it. I'm not sure if it's 5e. I think it's 5e. Mm. Yes, it is. It comes from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. So there you go. That's what you find. Uh, and a pouch of three silver. Awesome. Um, I will at the same time... Two- uh, somebody slams down in front of you a piece of paper, and it says, uh, writ for the death of, um, uh, Grungebeard. <laughs> Let's go with him. that is his name. And, uh, it says, mean? uh, if you, it, it's, it basically, it's, like, um, a bounty. So, since oh. you killed him, you can take this to, uh, somebody in town and, and, you can reclaim the bounty of uh, of five gold for killing him. Oh, he was a rather yeah, low-level criminal. I'm going to pocket that for sure. I'm going to stick it in every woman's favorite chest pocket. <laughs> um, I'm gonna right under slip, my armor. I'm going to slip Valmira two silver because I owed her one from the gambling. Oh, um, Awesome. Five gold. That's that's a good deal. Yeah. And we got his money, and I got this cool doohickey thing here. I don't know how it works, but I'm going to have fun. It makes a fun noise. Oh, the flintlock? <laughs> yeah. We'll have to find you someone who can get you properly trained on those. Very efficient tools. I have never seen one until I saw the really big ones on that ship that we Absolutely. set on fire. Yeah, it's just like a tiny one of those. I'll, uh, I'll take a picture. Or actually, no. Um, if you got a second, I'll, uh, I'll write down in the group chat what it does. Um, Flint I can say, though, Galadin, as a, uh, as a half jump for your forehead, when it kicks, it kicks. Uh, Gedlin, nothing, knowing nothing about gun safety, is like holding it and like looking down the barrel. Just like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't Are you do flagging that. everybody? <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna try and like take it out of here, like stop, stop, stop. Point it out. That's my pirate doohickey. It's my dingle hopper. <laughs> uh. Don't you me. There you go. It's a, it's kind of a slightly homebrew weapon. Not, not. Not in a bad way. Um, there you go. That's the stats I just sent in the group message. Awesome. In Discord or... Uh, I sent it in Discord. Cool. All right. Um, with that, uh, all the people funnel back in and the tavern becomes li- lively like it was. And... Uh, yeah, that's... Um, Things seem to be going back to normal. Uh, shortly thereafter, a 
bard, or at least a wannabe bard, uh, walks up walks up to the stage and he bravely announces My name is Galahad Mc, Mc, uh, McPhil <laughs> There we go, that's his name. I just made that up. <laughs> and I I shall sing you a song. <laughs> and he goes into a song that is just absolutely full of uh, fumbles, voice cracks, forgetting of words. He repeats the the first verse twice, then halfway through he remembers that he's on the second verse, switches to the second verse's words, and they make no sense following up the first one. You hear all kinds of boos, people throwing food at him. Somebody throws a tomato and it hits him straight in the in the forehead. And there's tomatoes. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to sing the song for me. Oh gosh. Um hang on a second. I can perform this. I just had one in mind. I gotta remember the words. Uh it's literally called the Bard Song. Um How does it go? How does this tune go? Oh, hang on just one second so I can get the gist of it. Ah, there we go. That's all I need. Now you all know the birds and uh, songs when hours have gone by. I'll read again, but let's sing the bard's song. <laughs> um, now I'll hear my song. <laughs> At the dawn of the morning, we'll sing the bard's song. And it goes on and on. It's just completely just um, um, ear splitting, okay. ears bleeding. <laughs> People booing. Boo! Boo! Get off! People stage. are booing. Hey, wait, wait, wait. In the middle of all the boos, though, Myra's going to stand up and do like a massive, big old cat call whistle. Like a grown man, but a halfling woman. <laughs> uh, oh! He, uh, it, it startles him. Uh, and you see his uh, otherwise really, um, like, nervous face. All of a sudden, he, um, he like snaps out of it, and he starts going into like he he uh, starts singing a little bit better. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow will take us away far from home. No one will ever know our names. And he looks at you, and he uh, he, he he starts to get a little more confident. He actually cracks a smile, and uh, the crowd calms down a little bit, and he keeps going. He makes it through the song and uh, kind of redeems himself a little bit. Uh, I'm assuming he has a tip jar. Um, yeah, yeah. There's like a little, like, like a cup up there. I'll go put a couple copper in his cup. You uh, place the copper in the cup that's got a little bit of tomato juice in there. He's trying his best, you guys. <laughs> Doing a great job. Doing a great Hell job. Keep, keep it up. Galahad Encore. McFinn. Mc, McPhil. There we go. That's what his name was. Uh, Galahad comes down from the stage, uh, and he, uh, kind of sh shudders a little bit. Huh. Uh, that was not my best performance. Thank you for the coin. I can feel uh, we all in the man. have bad days, man. Don't give up on your dreams. You're spreading joy. You're doing God's work. <laughs> my God, specifically, but keep it up. Well, thank you. I, 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 I was getting... I was getting kind of embarrassed there. I f forgot the words, and, and when I when I for when I get nervous, I it's, it's hard to sing when you're nervous. Forget what I'm yeah. doing. <sighs> um, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go home now. <laughs> good uh, good night, sir. Good night. He gr grabs his instrument and he uh, goes out the door, leaves the building. <laughs> this sweet guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> One of the guys at the table is like, ah, he didn't earn that. Why did you give him that coin? Eh, yeah, you know. I have it. Why not? My coin to give. My coin to give. He's doing his best. He's learning. You gotta support the arts, people. Hmm. I always thought that was a waste of breath. You got anything else to 
The only thing that's worth doing is killing. Well, you're quite a peach, aren't you? Well, you're just a you're just a bright pool of sunshine, there, aren't you, buddy? Like even I don't want to kill that much. And look at the show <laughs> we just had. Uh, he's... Hey, we start a fight for no reason. <laughs> and even he thinks that's not enough fighting. He uh he growls a little bit at you. <sighs> I feel like I'm going to try and growl back, but you know that scene in The Lion King where <laughs> Simba's trying to roar at the hyenas and he's like, wow, 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 yeah, like that. The amount of times we've had Lion King references in this game has been great. I love The Lion King. <laughs> um, he he uh, looks at you, he pounds his ale, and then he gets up, belches really loudly, and storms out of the room. Or out of the building. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. Whoa, whoop. <laughs> I'm keep drinking. <laughs> uh, that kind of brings us to, like, actual nightfall at that point. Ooh. Did we, like, did we get a room anywhere? Or is it back to the ship? We can sleep on the boat. Let's sleep on the boat. I don't think a room here is going to be... Yeah. It doesn't I'm seem like the most in. relaxing place to sleep. I'm not sleeping in these sheets. We just had to kill a guy over a bar seat. I can't imagine what we'd do for a room. Right. Although, in the morning, we should definitely go get that gold, though. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you for... Yeah, for sure. For sure. Did the name I don't know about it? you, but I was not prepared for a jungle expedition... I came here to like buy exotic spices and whatnot. So like, where do you think spices grow? In the jungles. I am here to find this. There is a curse amongst the people of this world. Is it's starting here in Chult? Oh no, I'm here for that too. But that's not why I like started. Oh. I was I was already headed to Chult when when I was tasked with removing this blight upon. Sorry, I can't. I forgot we already talked about why we're. Yeah, you were like specifically dispatched for this task. I was just yep. like already in route. And they're like, ah, hey, he'll do. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, hey, my boy Gad Gadlin's over there. Hit him up. <laughs> oh, you wanna you wanna bring the bard? Is that what you're saying? Oh no no no! Oh, sorry, I was I, trying, I can't remember Zach and I can't remember each other's names. Gedlin. Oh, you said Gedlin. Okay. Not Gallatin. Yeah. Uh, Gedlin, although that being said, if we could, we could get bring a drunk bard, a bard around. that followed us around like Witcher style, wrote cool songs about us, I'm not opposed. I'm just I don't know what a bard costs. We definitely can't get that last guy. He was trash. Yeah. But, like if we can step it up. <laughs> I'm not gonna send to his face. He's new. He's trying, but like, no, Gal. I can't have that guy writing songs about me. Like, you never know. Maybe he'll get better. I mean, when he gets better, sure, awesome. But like, no, no, no. He's some lessons. We'll, we'll hit him up on the way back through. <laughs> yes, that for sure. He'll have more experience by then. Um. <laughs> oh man, great. But I like this bard idea. All right, well, you make it back to the ship, and uh, you're able to catch uh, 40 winks, get a get some sleep. Why don't we have your long rest uh, flintlock check, your investigation check on the flintlock. Nine. You didn't figure it out this night, unfortunately. I feel like I definitely dropped a piece of shot on the ground and, like, slipped on it and, like, busted <laughs> my butt. Ow, that would hurt. Oh, oh, these are worse than caltrops. That was diabolical. That was <laughs> awful. Oh, I'm keeping them just for that. Oh, next time I'm flying. That was ridiculous. <laughs> oh. You guys are really fun to roleplay with. 
I feel like if Gedlin had the feather fall spell, he would cast it when he slips. Ah! <laughs> 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 uh, spell slot. Damn it. <laughs> the next morning uh, arrives, and it's it's a little bit rainy this morning, uh, but despite that, there are definitely people out and about in in town. Um. You look down at your bounty, and it says that you uh, you need to go to uh, the built the. How do I want to say this? You need to go to the nobleman's court in order to receive the bounty for uh, the death of uh, Grungebeard. Nobleman's court. Point of sway, sir. All right, I'm down. Hey Val, listen. Um, that was a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty quick five gold we just made there, and we got to do a do, do a good deed in the process. We should see if there's any other bounties we can collect on. We're here for like a week, right? Isn't that what the captain said? We're gonna be here for a couple of days. Yeah, for I think a few days. they like, yeah, they gotta like repair and like hire some more crew and stuff. Right. Okay, but that last one, and maybe it's because I did it with just like such impulsiveness without finding a bounty first. But it kind of made me feel like one of those murder, murder hobo people. <laughs> oh. Have you have you ever been a murder hobo? For sure, but no, not then. That guy, he attacked us. Okay, sure like that's how that happened. Like he like. He, he threw a knife at us. He threatened us first. And then when I was like, hey, man, are you sure you want to do this? He flashed his little pirate doohickey like he was some big tough guy. You just didn't let him attack first. Like, no, you, you were you were in the right. Everybody okay. saw it. Right. Everybody knew that guy was a prick. Somebody's willing to pay five gold. That's how big of a prick he is. So I don't, don't, don't sweat that one. I mean, definitely like, let's keep an eye on that moving forward just to be sure. But, like, that time, I think we were good. Okay. And she's very sensitive about that because she can't be a strong murder hobo. No. Being that she's know. a paladin of Lathander. No, that that was a bad guy. I mean, okay, come on. You're right. You're right. You're right. I made that choice for a reason. Thank you. Who Let's go. Let's bullies go find some more heavily armed guys. halflings anyway? It's like, that's like, like, that's just unwise. Like, you gotta know. Like, you gotta know, right? Like, you see, we're not, we're not <laughs> slouches over here. We're, we're packing heat. I was like, oh, yeah, we'll pick a fight with those guys. Like, that, he, he knew what he was getting. Let's just make sure our next person is, like, the worst of them. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, but I think we need to see if there's any more of these bounties we can get. Yeah. that was some good money. That was good. And, again, cleaning, you know, cleaning things up a little bit in the process. I'm not opposed to, uh... I didn't, you know. I didn't know you had breath visitation. That was nice. Oh. I'm telling you, the most useful spell like like sure it's not gonna like save my life in a firefight but like day to day you don't need that right every day right right (laughs) i wish i had that like of all the i have and i raised my fist to the air i'm not nearly that clean yeah also i can do this cool thing um and i'm gonna like pull out a piece of hardtack cast press digitation to make it taste like fresh baked bread I'm gonna hand it to uh, uh, Val Mira and say, "Taste that now." Ooh. Yeah. So even when the wine's bad, the wine's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I salt it. <laughs> salt whatever the food. Prestidigitation tastes like my wine. <laughs> I have a sweet myself. Okay, what do you say we take a quick five and I will prepare something for when back. Sound good? Perfect time. Yeah, sounds great. All right.
what did you say? I'm doing some oh. coding. Coding? Yes, you better sir. plug your phone in then, baby. Cool. What you making? It's the it, well. It's actually within a game, but <laughs> oh, because I'm trying to get back into it. So I'm just trying to get my mind back into the concept of it. So instead of throwing myself to the wolves, I'm just kind of doing something a little bit easier, at least in theory. But cool. um, but yeah, I'm getting into managing arrays right now, and it's pretty scary because of the situation. Because you remember what arrays are? Mm-hmm. In the situation, let's say there's an array that had, you know, five, that had five entries, five, four, three, two, one. If I wanted to remove the four and then sit, and then a program would see that and see this is an array with only four entries. Yeah. I'm realizing, oh, I would have to make a program that would manage that. Like I would have to manually code <laughs> mm. getting rid of that four. And then getting everything else to kind of shift over to the left and then removing the one at the end. <laughs> Just, Fun. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry, I sat down too fast. No problem. Are we all back? Yeah, Liz, you're muted, but yes, we're back. Okay. Okay. Uh. I'm gonna go now. No, no, no. I gotta get ready for bed, and I get up early in the morning. So, right on. See ya. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. God bless. Um, your you look at your bounty the next morning, and it says that you need to seek out a Gibbs Hammond in the royal court. Is the handler of bounties. Gibbs Hammond. Sounds like a very noteworthy fellow. Uh, the there are some signs on the street in front of you. Uh, path goes three separate ways. There's one that goes north, one that goes west, and one goes east. Well, not east, south. Which one looks like the fanciest part of town? Because that's where the, the nobles are. The northern road seems to go slope upward and go into a higher portion of the uh, of the island, and it seems like the nicer buildings are up there. And the the signpost says Noble District, and it points north. Yeah, that tracks. Rich people like to look down on everybody. I say, <laughs> being the child of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Gedlin does not consider himself wealthy um but like his family is hobbit rich like <laughs> <laughs> um the road is quite full and busy it's it's actually kind of hard to see where you're going there's so many people uh there's animals pulling carts full of stuff uh there's big groups of people walking through um everyone around you is significantly taller than you are with the exception of one or two dwarves that uh, that pass you by uh, but most of them seem to be human in this portion of the world I assume that like I'll periodically like shimmy up a signpost just so I can like get up ahead and be like no nope, we're going on the right way shimmy back down like that type <laughs> of thing <laughs> oh oh no 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 can we stack one on top of the other yeah, can you boost me up? Can yes, I, can, can I, you like... can just ride on my shoulders. <laughs> Do a that's strange, that's like, a short, That's a short human, but like, nope, that's just two hobbits stacked on top of each other. <laughs> I like this. I like this a lot. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a very average-looking person. Nope, that's two hobbits stacked on top of each other. <laughs> we need a trench coat. <laughs> yes. Ooh, I did. I probably battered up that one way too bad for grunge beard guy. Mhm. Mm yeah, I don't think there's much of the coat left of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, just up we'll ahead find of another you. Another one. We'll remember that for this next bounty. Just up ahead of you, uh, you're still on the upward slope. A cart breaks. A wheel breaks on the cart. Comes to a screeching halt, and its load starts to uh, to empty. 
and start rolling downhill towards you. And it's a bunch of, of small boulders. Just start rolling downhill towards you. Um, I am going to, like a ninja, hop up, push Valmira out of the way, and then just, like, <laughs> through the boulders <laughs> like a champion. Can I I'm really have... hoping you're going to let me roll, like, acrobatics or something cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I have an acrobatics check? <laughs> Dirty 20, my guy. Oh! <laughs> You Just because I only have a plus three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to embell embellish anymore? But yeah, you succeed. Oh yeah, I'm totally just like like less like ninja meat and more like Tai Chi. Just like whoa. <laughs> like I go like this right as like one rolls between my legs and the one like goes over my head. <laughs> oh, the display. <laughs> you catch a I lot of attention. Uh, several people stop, uh, the, you know, the people that were out of the way, they stop and they look at you. I've never seen that before. I'll bow. Like Nimble I'm a strict performer. Nimble at its finest, everybody. Come on, you know the ah. have to be As I ban a white by hand sword. Uh, about, uh, people start moving again. Most of them look like, eh, not all that impressive. And the one or two people kind of look at you and like, hmm. Interesting. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, the owner of that cart is, like, busily trying to fix his cart as you walk past him. We're going to help put up some of the... We'll pick up some of the boulders. That would be the good alignment thing to do, for sure. It would be the good alignment thing to do. Yeah, for sure. Where is your alignment, Alan? I was Bring just joy. seeing if I had the uh, cantrip mend. I do not. Hmm. I don't even think I can get it. No. Nope. Yeah, this is a little beyond prestidigita prestidigitation. <laughs> I think I had something that could have mended, but I went with another choice on something else. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think mend is a is a wizard spell and warlocks don't get that. Uh, I'm laughing at my own joke that I haven't even said out loud. I'm like, hey, let's have you do a medicine check on the cart. <laughs> Can I do pure wounds? <laughs> while we're uh, while we're walking down the uh, down the street, I'm gonna like pull out the flintlock and be like, hey, I figured out something I can do with this, and I'm going to spin it with, on the trigger guard like oh. around my finger, and then try to catch it. It's empty, but nobody else knows that. <laughs> One ah, woman with her like child goes, ah! and runs, runs with her child. Hang on. <laughs> I, I have an actual sound for this. Where is it? Bring them in. We don't need another oh, maybe I don't. And again, Valmir's gonna reach for it, but try and like grab the barrel of the gun and not like his hand. Like, stop, stop. <laughs> the world. I hope you cheddar bow yourself in this thing. Oh well. <laughs> uh, without much further ado, you make it to the surface and, or not surface, the top. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. You've been underground this whole time. Uh, you make it to the top, <laughs> and uh, there's some high-rise buildings uh, that definitely seem to be of noble. Um, I don't know, build. I guess uh, they're definitely nicer-looking buildings than the ramshackle stuff down down there. The worn-out old stone wooden buildings down at the actual uh, docks. Well, who knew there was such a nice part of town? I could relax in this place. I wonder if this is where the prince is held up. Surely oh, he's I wonder on that if they have an inn up here. Old boat. They have an inn up here. That might be more our speed. Yes. 
Do we know that we're headed in the right direction of this? Fort you don't Ellen? really know yet. No, it's kind of it's pretty new sure. Game. Can we look at any like? Can I see if there's any like clues or anything that are leading us? I mean, like, we're going to a nicer part of town, so that's a good sign. Yeah. The um. Well, let's see. The the traffic has reduced a little bit, or it's dispersed a bit as the street opens up to be wider. Uh, it's no longer like oh, a that's... narrow path up the side of the of the uh, cliffside. Now it's like the plateau and the, the road widens and there's rows of buildings and you're not exactly sure which one you're aiming for. You have very little information to go on. Uh, there are some signposts up ahead. Let's go to those. See what they say. I see a custom roll for Gedlin. Oh, no, ignore that. Ignore that. <laughs> I was just, like, seeing what it, like what the pistol roll would look like. But it's not 3D. And uh, it's one. Yeah. Right. Um. When you uh, approach... The signpost it it says that there's a there's a courthouse, um, which strikes you as a little bit odd because this is supposed to be like a lawless town. But um, no, you don't need to go to the courthouse, so it doesn't concern you that much. Um, there's the uh, the council building, and then there's a couple other kind of meaningless buildings that have nothing to do with what you're doing. Um, we should probably pop into the courthouse. If he's not there, they're gonna know where to find this guy. That's true. That's true. Let's go. Right, I mean, I feel like they, more than anybody, would at least know where to go. And be willing to tell us, considering what we do. Surely there's a kind secretary ready to help us somewhere. Or a receptionist. Clerk. There we go. Ooh, my little lantern's turned on. It's dark enough outside now. Nice. I love lanterns. Uh, <laughs> Me too. Okay. You make your way to the courthouse, and uh, the traffic continues to decrease. Uh, the rain actually stops, and the sun comes out. Nice. And uh, you see a, an, a large door with inscriptions on it, or not inscriptions, but like uh, details on it. It looks like a building that is um, very official. It's not exactly artwork so much as it's just like that meaningless stately, stately type of decoration you would see. It's Architecture, little, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the doors are actually... You know you're open. walking into a government building. Right, yeah. You, the doors are already open. And you, you, you walk in, you can oh. see, like, the furniture and stuff is, like, it's adequate, but it's definitely, like, leaves something to be desired. Like, it's like when you walk into the uh, the DMV or the DOT or whatever, it's like, uh, they got these awful chairs and that sort of thing. Okay, uh, yeah. And, um... It there is a desk, and there is a man behind the desk, fiddling through some scrolls. I would like to waltz up and ask him, Hello, good sir. We are looking for Val. What's the, what's the paper say? Oh, the Gorbachev. We're looking for a Gorbachev guy. Pretty sure his name's I, had, I show him the bounty. I, th I think it was Gary. <laughs> yeah. Gibbs Hammond. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. Give, give, give us him. Give us him. Gorbachev. Gary Gorbachev. Gary Gorbachev. We are That's in Russia now. In, that sucks. In pirate Russia, we have no Gorbachev. It's kicked out years ago. Um, Gibson guy. Yeah, we're looking for him. Oh, Gibbs. Oh, um, yes. Um, go out the door. 
Uh, th three buildings down, or start uh, first door on the right. That's where you'll find him. Thank Do you, you know if there's any more bounties? Hmm. I would check the lo local tavern. Uh, we have one up here. It's the. <laughs> I'm just gonna come up with the name. It's the uh, strangled cat. Yes. Uh, sounds like a very class establishment. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, we will definitely go check that out. <laughs> it, it, it can't. It can't be worse than the than the tavern we were at last. Night. <laughs> That's where we met this guy, who's now dead. <laughs> mm. Yes. Is there anything else I can do for you? Nah. Maybe later. He goes back to his work and he stamps, stamps the scroll pretty loudly. Thud. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Thud. Um, upon going out and following his direction, you're right. Following his in directions, you find a door to what looks like uh, it might have it might have at one point been a house, a little bit on the small side, and above it it says. Um, um, Cutthroat gives Hammond. Boy, have you seen the captain? Odd name, but uh, yeah, okay. Let's do this. Hmm. Door is shut. The handle seems locked. I'm gonna knock really loud, like a police knock. There's like one of those knockers on the door, one of those things. Or oh, that too. Yep. Like, You're knocking like a guard. Um, thud, thud, thud. And... I have the sound for this. I love it when I have sounds for things. Ah. There's the knock. <laughs> the door swings open. Hey, what can I do for you? I'm needing to speak to Mr. Gibbs Hammond. And I hold up the bounty. That'll be cutthroat to you. Let me see that. Grabs it. <laughs> You're here for His a bounty. body can be found outside of this tavern. And we brought some of his belongings that we will be keeping. But if anything looks familiar to prove... Yeah, I got those little pirate doohickeys. I'm going to spin it on my finger. He grabs it and stops you from swinging it. And he says, do not do that. I have told you a million times, Gedlin. It doesn't. I'm going to like pull the trigger. Like, it doesn't work. See? Like, oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Your trigger discipline is terrible, Gedlin. <laughs> Flagging himself and dry firing. Uh, <laughs> Zach. <laughs> Knows exactly how bad that would be in real life. It could be like, look, look, pop, pop, like pull it like five or six times. See, nothing. <laughs> yeah, let's play Russian back roulette. And forth, like back and forth on the trigger, just yanking on it. See, nothing, nothing, anything. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> except it's a flintlock, so it only has one shot. Um,. He says, yeah, it looks like these belong to Grunge Beard. And uh, to have this, the tavern tavern master must have deemed you worthy of receiving the age. I mean, One he moment. did try to kill us, and then we killed him first. Right. Yes. Allow me to retrieve your earnings. He turns and shuts the door. And you wait a very long five minutes and he comes to the door with five gold in a oh. bag made in just the whole bag is full of random assortments of copper and silver. He apparently had to really like scrape up the gold uh or he's being really cheap 
and just giving you the bad currency. <laughs> just giving you all oh, the so pennies. We got, paid in, we, we, we got paid in coinage. Yeah, you got you like... paid me in change, you... Let's see, I can't remember exactly what it's like, like but it would be... Day. It's probably like $150 in pennies or something like that. <laughs> uh... Well, it's it's five gold and it's ten gold or ten silver to a gold and a hundred copper to a gold. Right. So we probably got a hundred and fifty coins. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I try to remember how much five gold is compared to like the common wage. Because isn't it like a silver is like a good wage for a day? Um, they say like uh. In like in in an economically neutral place, a skilled tradesman, so like a carpenter or a blacksmith, um, can expect to earn two silver a day, and like a right. like a flagon of ale is usually a couple of copper. Um, right. So like you can expect to eat for like five copper. Okay. okay. For the most. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, at least I that's that's, that's rules is written, but like. Also, that's not on an island in the middle of nowhere. You right. know what I mean? Like, right. like that's on the mainland where there's steady trade and farms and stuff. Uh, Pirate Island? Who knows? Who knows? Anyone's guess. Um, very good. Um, he he says, um, "All right, to be off with you." That was all. We'll come back when we have another bounty. Mm. Yes. Bye. We gotta find the strangled cat because if we can make a little bit of coin, also we should sit. So we should find somewhere to sit and count this out. Oh, there's a coin be- sound. That's your money. <laughs> Perfect. Very cool. All right, we're no for room after account. And like, let me know how much I have in silver, platinum, all that. But I don't know. How- all right, I'll divvy it up for us. Okay. Okay. Um, the sign on the road says that the strangled cat is um, only about a block away. You follow the road you were on. All right. Let's head out. Okay. I will lead him and I, as that counts, to the strangled kitten cat close slightly dark but okay (laughs) it was already headed in that direction so I was like let's go (laughs) Um, to the strangled cat okay alright are you going inside yup Oh, yeah. I rolled the wrong die. And I'm going in with a good bit of bravado. Like, I'm getting into the strangled cat like a timid. Okay, add, give yourself 15 silver and 100 copper. Cool. Thank you. We getting rich. Okay, um, to your surprise, when you walk in, um, you see... A male halfling running the bar. So it's a short bar. Oh, I'm definitely going to roll up. Hi, hi, how are you? What can I get for you? Will it be, uh, will, will, will it be the steak, the mutton, the, uh, the... He lists off all the menu items, uh, which are... Uh, would you like the, the chicken, the pork, the beef, the duck, the fish, the, pa- the potatoes, the carrots, the greens, the eggs, the cheese? Just keeps going and going. The rice, the beans, the bread. Uh, oh my god. Dealer's choice. I trust you. Just surprise me, kid. But also, we heard there's bounties to be had here. Yes, the smoked beef. Yes, one smoked beef. I should make that two. Two smoked beef. Sounds good. We, we good call. Good call. About those bounties. Focus. Eyes here, bud. Eyes here. <laughs> I'll what, wait till what? he makes that contact with you. Um. Thank bounties. you for the food. Bounties. Yes. 
Uh, I, I need to check the board. I, I'm not sure what they are at the moment. Well, next time you're in that area, if you don't mind, thanks. Although it is second. nice to finally be in a properly sized establishment. I mean, not that I mind climbing up bar stools, but like this is so much more convenient. Yes, yes. I um, it took me many many years to save up enough. I used to be a waiter at a at a, uh, a different tavern, and <coughs> I saved I saved every penny I found on the floor in order to make this place. Uh, yes, yes, bounties, happen, bounties. Guys. I have. I have ten here, and I'm just gonna paste them um, into your chat, and you can look at these, see what you think. I'll just mention them out loud too. So there's uh, Nor uh, Waventifor, who was wanted dead or alive for an unpaid debt to the mayor. Um, Gora still in resp, wanted dead or alive, killed four people. Uh, Sonali Dumeran, wanted dead or alive, killed 60 people. <laughs> the person really outdid himself. Uh, Asgard Yacht, wanted alive, known dragon in disguise. Wandrazol. Can we scroll back to known dragon in disguise? No, I can, we cannot, but I do like the guy that killed 60 people. Yeah. I am I am curious about the dragon in disguise, though. Oh, I don't want to fight him. I want to talk to him. Sorry. You're nuts. Continue. Yes. Uh, Wandrazol Slatwinful. <laughs> what a name. Wanted dead. Unpaid debt to the mayor again. Uh, Chigorb. Wanted dead. Deserves it. Um, Just deserves oh, it. That's his term? <laughs> Just take my word for it. This guy's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Miniath Glorg, wanted dead or alive, ate my lunch. Uh, Maznik Glossom, wanted dead, poisoned the town well. That guy's evil. Thelareth, yep. Shamnery, uh, wanted dead, stole coffee from a local tavern. And Nostios Boiderarp, wanted dead for treason. Have a low threshold for the death penalty. You really Just do. owing the mayor money gets you killed around like, here. Has anyone Ooh. ever questioned this? <laughs> um, hey, this is Mintar, and anything goes. To the bartender. Okay, what about this guy that poisoned the whole the town well? The That's one that like killed sixty people. Especially evil. I know, but like, there's something especially evil about like murdering everyone's source of life. No, that, that, that's atrocious. That's what Romans used to do. That's an remember, act right? of terrorism. Oh, I'm sure a lot of people... Well, yeah, the Romans were awful. They invented yep. crucifixion. They would poison you know, the well. Did the guy that killed 60 people, like, did he... Did, did, did Are the 60 people, like, bad people? You know what I mean? Like, like was it Tony Soprano? Was like, everyone I kill knows this. They know what they're doing. Um. You know? But, the like, bar... to poison the town well, that's messed up. The barkeep... Oh, what was his name again? One second. Um... Quinnen Banbury is his name. The barkeep Quinnen. He says, uh, I, I don't know anything about these people. I just have the list. You will have to find them yourself. Do they all pay the same five gold? No. It's safe to assume that the more serious ones are worth more, but I do not know what the what the reward is. Alright, I'm gonna grab the uh, Sonali Dumeron. <laughs> Sonali Dumeron? Dumeron. That the poison room? That's, that's killed the, 60 that's people. That's the killed 60 people. You wanna also get the uh, uh, Maznek Glossom? The you poisoner? Think we could do two? I okay. think we got like a uh, most of a week. I think it's not that big of an island. We can track down two morons. You don't want to go for right, G Corb, cool. who's wanted dead because he deserves it? <laughs> Definitely I not. Be... I've seen the people around here. I do not trust their judgment. <laughs> deserves it. That's I'm gonna, like, reason. secretly, like, write down his name <laughs> just because, like, I'm curious about it, you know? <laughs> just gonna start looking for G Corb. I just, I gotta know. I gotta know. I wanna know. I gotta know, you know? 
<laughs> okay, so Sonali and Maznik are the serious ones. Okay. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you're going to do while you're in this tavern? Uh, well, we got some smoked beef coming. That's, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Um... Anybody want to arm wrestle here? Yeah, well, what's what's going on in this tavern now that we've conducted our business? We'll turn around and survey the area as we wait for our smoked beef. Uh, there are some gamblers uh, casting lots with a bunch of dice. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pat my chest where I got my loaded dice. Be like. <laughs> If I don't take their money, is it really cheating? And I'm going to roll over there. Uh, we're going to go with it's the same game that we did last time where you guess what the person's roll is going to be uh, with 2d6. So the problem is you're going to have one that's loaded, one that isn't. It's okay. And you can choose whatever number you want on the loaded die, by the way. Um, I had failed to make that clear before. Um, oh, okay. So if you guess the number, you automatically win. If you beat their number, uh, then you win that way. Um, okay. And then you just bet however much you want to bet. That's how we did it last time. If you want to do it again. All right. I definitely want to do it again. Um... I will bet a silver. Um, I'll, 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 I'll get my dice added to the added to the pool. There are uh, two guys. Um, actually, surprisingly, you see uh, Owen from your ship is actually here right at the moment. Is part of the part of the group. Oh, spectacular! Yeah, he was one of the guys you gambled against last time. And he says, Oh, Edlund! Come join us! Excellent. Excellent. Love a good game. Um, he passes you two dice. He passes me two dice? Can I do a sleight of hand check to slip my dice in? Go on. Mm, yes. Just two more, please. Hurry up. <laughs> Natural 20! He doesn't notice that you change out one of the dice for your charlatan's die. 23. <laughs> um, nice. All right. Owen is the first guy, and then um, Rory is the other guy. So, oops. Uh, I won't affect the dice roll when it's uh, Owen's roll. Okay. Just against Rory? Yeah. Yeah. Right on. All right, Owen's going to roll first. Uh, you're welcome to guess if you want. Uh, seven. He rolls a three. Uh, Rory's no disappointed roll. as he guessed a four. Um, then Rory's going to roll, and Owen's going to guess seven. I'm going to guess four and make one of them a one. You won. You guessed four. <laughs> uh, how much was it? One silver? Yes, one silver. Spectacular. Owen oh, pats you on the back. Well done, Gedlin. Oh, starting off strong. Yes. It's about time my luck turned around. <laughs> um, my roll now? Uh, I think you can... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's a new bet. Uh, what? New bet, because you already won that round. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to make one of them a six, and I'll roll the other one. Is a two, so eight. Okay. Um, I'll just roll for their guesses. Someone guessed a nine, and the other one guessed a ten. So... Not guess. Um, All right. Owen's gonna go ahead and roll, and Rory's gonna guess three. And do you want to guess? Um. 
I'll I'll guess seven again. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, Gedlin, you're gonna make me poor. Rory's gonna go. <laughs> Rory's gonna go ahead, and Owen's gonna guess five. Oh my goodness. I'll guess three. You got another seven. <laughs> <laughs> again, seven again. <laughs> it's, I keep rolling the same two die and I keep getting seven. <laughs> I should switch it up. Seven is the most common number. That's true. Uh, it has the most number of combinations. That's right. I forgot about that. I'll teach you real craps if you want for like games like this. That'd probably be good to know because I don't actually know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of making up something on the spot. Um, I think you've earned three silver, right? I have, yes. Yes. Uh, the waiter brings over the food, and, uh, what's his name? Quinnin? Quinnin Banbury on the other side, uh, on the other side of the building. Enjoy your smoked beef! Go on. Thank you! Hurry <laughs> up. I, like, was that on the house, or are we paying, did we already pay him? I'm gonna look at Val, like... We, do we, we owe him money, right? <laughs> so, we'll leave a good tip. We'll leave a good tip. Okay. We also <laughs> gotta get Owen here really drunk. We owe him that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I will order uh, not a flagon, but a pint for my good friend Owen. A pint? They come in pints? I'm getting one. I that guy has one. <laughs> <laughs> Rory, Rory orders a pint. Get me a pint. You drunk prick. And I you love all it. have a merry time. I'm working on my tavern stuff. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. It's very good. Let's hope your party doesn't do a thing where they just decide they're going to, like, start a gambling game and then declare everybody else is cheating and start a bar fight to cover their tracks. <laughs> and do that every single time they enter a tavern. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think that's probably yeah, no, you leave whatever you think for a tip and that was satisfactory for the food. I'll leave uh, a silver piece for the tip. Perfect. That's what I was Earlier doing. did you say I get fifty or fifty? Gold 15, pieces. one five silver. Okay, good. I did that. And a right. hundred copper. <laughs> okay, cool. I leave a silver piece for a dip. <laughs> All right. Um, looking for Denali and Mastic. Okay. So, did you ask anybody in the tavern about these folks? No, but we definitely should have. What about just... that Rory guy while we're drinking our pint? Yeah, let's go back and, and buy another round for uh, Owen and Rory and see if we can uh, see, see see if we can. I'll 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 get two silver worth of booze. Okay. Um, uh, Owen that's has about what through. I cheated them out of. Um, uh, uh, Rory, Rory is a na not a native. He lives here in Mintarth, Mintarth, um, and he he says. Uh, Oh, that Maznek fellow, I heard about him. He, uh... Ooh, I feel lightheaded all of a sudden. Um, hmm. Something in these. There's a pint. Um, he spills a bunch of ale all over his face as he tries to take another swig. Uh, and he says, uh... I, th I think he's just a... Just a town criminal... Uh, he lives down in the down near the docks. I think I I don't really know. What so do you know? What he Alan? looks like. Uh, Any notable features? I, he's I missing heard, an arm. I heard he. I heard someone say he's very short, and he might have green skin. Is he a goblin? 
Mm. I, I don't think goblin. so. I don't think so. I think more like a uh, half goblin. Half is goblin that? is not a thing. What are the guys with the big round noses? I can't remember what they are. Gob. Uh, why don't you roll a an insight check for me? See if your character would, would know. I got a negative one. What are you looking at? Eighteen. Uh -huh. There you go. Uh, he's I trying to know. describe and failing to describe a gnome. A gnome? Okay. Yeah, he thinks there is a that uh, Maznik Glossom is a gnome. Okay. Looking for a gnome with green skin, I guess. Deeply disconcerting. He, he could be wrong on some of the details. <laughs> All right, well, we'll look for fun. a gnome or someone with green skin or just someone <laughs> who's short and shifty. We'll, we'll cover all our base. Someone with a big round nose. <laughs> right, right. Somebody <laughs> short, shifty with a big round nose. Possibly green skin, possibly a gnome. <laughs> yeah, it could be anything at this point. <laughs> Right, we haven't really narrowed it down that much, but at least we know what part of town it's it is. It's just a goblin with a, a, with a cloud head nose or on. a ponytail. We don't know. <laughs> if it's a goblin with a clown nose on, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious for me. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's all the information he shares with you, and he goes back to spilling his beer all over himself. Or yeah, ale, sorry. Own. yeah. <laughs> to each their own. All right. Well, let's uh, let's head on down towards the docks. Maybe we can stop in at the two doors. Excuse me. And uh, see if anybody there knows uh, any more about Maznik or uh, Sonali. Hmm. Okay. Um. Fast forward to getting down to the docks area. Um. You are back amongst a lot of people. And should have bought a trench coat. The crowd is getting should have bought a trench coat. Really quite busy down by the by the docks, and um, there's people kind of like actually shoulder to shoulder with you because it's that busy, and you you feel somebody bump into you as you're walking on. Um, in fact, that that one seemed a little bit rough, but you're then as you continue on, you get like lightly shoved around by some of the folks. Uh, and it seems like whoa, whoa, it's getting to be a little on? bit hard to walk. All right, screw this. I cast fly on both of us. As we float up above everybody, uh, forget you forget you. You people, you people look up at you. But most of them don't find it all that particularly uh, I think I could get you crazy. from your schedule. Yeah, good thing we're not wearing <laughs> robes, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah, and you, you see... Roll a perception check, both of you. Okay. Team. With my plus eight. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, Gedlin didn't quite see it. Uh, he sees a glimpse of it, but it, 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 nothing really, uh, he doesn't really think much of it. Uh, Belmira notices a small, short, hooded figure walking the other direction. In his hand is a small bag. Her intuition kicks in as she looks at Gedlin, and Gedlin's coin purse is missing. Oh, I'm a fly and um, Do it. <laughs> I'm right behind you, buddy. Go, go, go. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. You're you're just like flat out attacking, or is there a strategy here? Just so that uh, I know I, what I'm dealing with. We gotta like land and flank him and be like, and like, if it's my coin purse, I'm gonna know what it looks like. Um, right. Like, that's my coin purse, broski. Nice try. Okay. Problem with that, he there are front, people I'll land behind. everywhere. So it's like. Shoulder to shoulder, it would be really hard to land. Flying. Oh, hard to land? Then we're gonna follow him. 
Yep, we're following him. Okay, he's gotta duck sense. down an alley at some point. Yeah, that's exactly what he yet. does. Is he actually make he breaks right and climbs down underneath one of the docks, and you you lose him to sight, lose sight of him yeah. for a second. Immediately zipping down after him. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let's have another perception check then, since you now need to kind of like actually find him. Fourteen. Ah, seventeen. Uh, Valmira, you find a couple f fresh footprints in the wet sand. Uh, they they head off underneath the boardwalk, just around the corner. Follow them. So we can fly sixty feet in a turn. We should be able to outpace him pretty quickly now that he's like not in the crowd. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, unless he, unless there's something going on that I don't know about. Well, if you're... Well, I don't know if you can fly underneath the boardwalk. That's the thing. I mean, How if we have work? space to walk, we could probably fly. I'll buy that. As far as I know, it just gives you, like, a three-dimensional move speed. I'll buy that. Um... Yeah, um... It's tight. You're able to follow the prince and you um, float over towards the small hooded figure which is still like actually like walking away with great haste and he's making his way towards a door that's well, underneath just, like, the like circle arm. around him can I shoot off two eldritch blasts like to specifically not hit him but to go around him um Hit the door, hit the door, hit the door. It's like a, like a stop thief. Oh. Yeah, I think, uh... Can I... Do you want, like, an intimidation check or an attack roll, or...? Uh, if you're going for intimidation, I think that's fine. Don't fail me now! Yes! 19... Is off two Eldritch Blasts. <laughs> oh, actually, I probably have sounds for that. Fails. There we go. That's much better. Uh, they impact on the left and on the right side of the door. He turns and looks o over to you, and you see a. The. Uh, it's definitely shadow over his face, but you see a round nose. And then he turns, opens the door, and hops inside, trying to shut it behind him. But I imagine oh, it right behind him. the door open. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're coming in hot. I'm just gonna like try and like shove my butt. I think I might have a map for this. I've been saving this for a while. I think this will work. Wait. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Well, he knows where he's going, and so you come in to this area, and he's already moved a little bit down the tunnel. I'm just going to grab your tokens, because I think you need them in order to see what's going on. Probably. Um, oh, and Gedlin is going to be at full health. He has healed. Five. There we go. Still, I, I made a token for Gedlin, but I, unless you don't care, I need a picture for Valmira's token. It's up to you. Oh uh, yeah, I need to get one. Okay. Um, no, no hurry on that. Okay, and uh, there's dynamic lighting on this map. Um, as far as I'm concerned, neither of you have a light source on you, so. I have dark vision. I have sup I have devil sight out That's to 150. Right. That's right. Okay. Uh, 120. I like there is something I can do. Man, that just like renders every dark map just completely pointless. <laughs> I hope you like what you've done to me. Oh, okay. I'm it. going to uh, use a slot to channel divinity 
And oh, that's only for one minute though. Never mind. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Channel divinity. Okay. Yeah, right. but when I get into combat, um, I will have uh, 20 feet of. Gedlin, just one moment while I light. put him in yeah. here for you. Oh, yeah. And okay. then. Another 20 feet of dim light when I'm in combat. Um, right, this map was not actually populated for um, this encounter, so. <clears throat> assets, free assets. Don't know that I have what I need. I'm gonna use one that's similar. Okay, um, ignore what he's holding when you see him. Alright, let's go. I'm ready now. Oh, sorry, okay. Uh, cha -cha. Come down here. Come down here. Valmira! This way! I follow his voice to the best of my ability. Right, I'm probably not like the best job of staying with the group and directing everybody. <laughs> um, as I am very worried about my money bags. Okay, I want to cast Divine Sense as an action to protect good and evil. Until the end of your next turn, you can use you can sense anything affected by the hollow spell, hollow spell, or know the location of any celestial fiend undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. You can use this feature four times per long rest. Can you tell me one more time what that was? Divine what Sense. Divine Sense. Okay. I just want to read I, it. I would It'll like to make a perception me. check to see if I can find the mook. This Maznek character. Divine sense. I'm trying to find her divine sense real fast so I can. No worries. It was just a little more than I was able to follow. Who's this? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Where can I find it? It's under my actions. Oh, there we go. Uh, or do I have to be like in initiative to do it? I hear it or see it here. I'm just reading to make sure I understand what it is. Don't worry, Mister. Last jewel fiend or undead with? Well, he's not one of those. Okay. So I don't think this would apply. Sorry. Okay. Do you want me to still cast it like as a roll? I, I'm not. I don't know if this is like getting too into it, but like, if I did cast it, like, well, now I don't know that he's. I know he's not one of those, or like, there's nothing around, or I can I just like not cast it. Well, you could do certainly deduce that he's not one of those by casting it. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine Which with would doing be that. Useful yeah. information. Yes. Okay. And what was Gedlin like, doing? We don't have any of those to, to contend with, then. <clears throat> what was Gedlin um, doing? Gedlin was going to make a perception check to see if he could find him. Uh, be my guest. All right. Perception. How does a 26 do me? Excellent. He must be in one of the, the rooms with the doors. Are you able to see the doors? No. I, okay. Nope. This is one of the first maps I ever put dynamic lighting on, and I think I made a mistake because I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm going to redraw the doors for you so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. It's just not going to look like super lore friendly. Door here. That's fine. And door okay. here. Okay. Two red lines are doors. Uh, I can only see the fur. Oh, no. Over here? Yep, that's one of and them. Over here? Yep, okay. that's correct. Okay. So those are actual doorways. Uh, I think I 
actually kind of hid them without realizing it. I'll run over and check this one real quick. I don't know where I am. You pop in I'm and here with you. you are greeted by a bandit. And he says, Huh! What are you doing here? And he rushes over to smack you over the head with his club. Roll initiative? Yeah. Well, it's just the two of you. So I guess that's uh, not really necessary. Darn. <laughs> Sad. Words aren't don't mean as much anymore, I guess. Maybe I should change do back. Do I hear anything? Oh, good. Whatever you want to do. Um, what's your passive perception, Velmira? Um, na, 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 na. 12. You do not hear it. The door has blocked the sound. I'm at like, Gedlin? Gedlin! Oh god, Gedlin, we should have never followed him in. <laughs> Gedlin? Um, I'm guessing that a 14 does not hit. Not even close. Yeah, I didn't think so. He swipes and misses. Your turn. Uh, well, seeing as I don't have my sword out, I will cast Eldritch Blast in his face twice. Okay. It's a 13 hit. Yes. Sweet. That'll be four points of damage. Lowest possible amount of damage. <laughs> All right. Does an eight hit? No. All right. Wow, that was atrocious. That's the lowest roll I can roll without having to re-roll. <laughs> Bless your heart. Um. All right. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna yell. Bow! Find him. Polo! Alright, uh, I guess Valmira, if you want to go, go ahead. Um. <sighs> so, if I'm in the area. Okay, here's what I want. But I'm. Right? So, obviously, I'm going to wield my battle axe, but I'm going to go ahead and channel divinity. Um, because, in, like, outside of the plus three to attack, it also gives me 20 foot of bright light and then 20 feet of dim light beyond that. Oh, 20 and 20? Yep. Okay, I'll guess that. We gotta get you dark vision, so, girl. Well, I don't know how to do that yet. And I'm gonna make it a slight blue tinge. There you go. I still can't see him. Am I in a doorway? No, you were stuck between a crate and the wall. Oh, uh, okay, there we go. Oh, Gedlin, I see you. Where did he go? Not over here. Check the other okay. door, and I'm gonna like point that I way. I see the other door. Okay, Velmira, I need you to do a uh, spell save for me. What is the spell save? Well, I think Zach's coming to show you. Nope, he's going to get food. Water, water. How about I roll for save? Okay, so your sheet should like, tell you. If, that's my spell casting? if you go to spells, uh, your. S um, okay. oh, sorry, I forget. It's already. It's just a DC. I have to beat your fourteen. Oh, that's fourteen. Yourself. Okay, I see that now. Yep. Sorry, that was my bad. Okay, so I got to beat a fourteen. So I don't. Oh no! Add just kidding. That is part of the saving throw. Just kidding. Uh, nope, I need you to do a constitution saving throw instead, that's... Perfect, okay. So remember when I roll that I get plus three on my saves. Yes, that's right. Oh, how does the 28 do me? It's fantastic. Uh, it's you're my gonna, girl. 
for my very natural 20. Um... Okay, well you still take damage. You just don't take full damage. Look at there. Um... Gotta find enough dice. I know that's always a fun thing to hear. I need to find more dice. Right. Right? Like, yeah, great. The good news is, is we don't lose fly until I fail a constitution save. So you can take a green hit to the water <laughs> and still be able to fly. Um, fly, you fools. Just fly, you fools. All right. You're going to take... 20 radiant damage as you step on a ward on, or not a ward, but a rune on the floor, and a bright flashing light erupts, and you are blinded. Blinded by the light. You will be blinded. Um, you will be blinded until you make a successful constitution saving throw at the end of your turn. So, you, you've you already done your, your constitution saving throw for this turn, but next turn you get an opportunity to make another one. But it okay. specifically says at the end of each of its turns. That's weird. How am I supposed to see during... I guess that's the point, being blind to my... Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're blind. Uh-oh. I'm blind! I'm not playing! <laughs> and I'm going to turn off your vision so that you're actually blind. <laughs> I'm going to try and communicate that to, oh god, to what's his face, Gedlin. Okay, Gedlin, I'll have you do a passive perception, or what's your passive perception, I mean? 18. Oh, dang. Okay, well, he's got to make a good roll. Just a second here. Nothing. Hmm. You're pretty sure that the gnome is in the room with Valmira. Excellent. And you've got this uh, other bandit pretty well holed up in his room. Um, it looks like you're outside the door. Did you do that on purpose? Oh, no, just so I can see. Um, okay. I am going to blast him in the face with Eldritch Blast. Okay. It's a 17 hit. Yes. Give me some real damage this time. All right, that's better. Eight damage. Okay. Uh, he falls. He's dead. Excellent. I will then fly 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Where, where is the guy? I should be able, should I be able to see the guy? You believe so when you go in there. Um. Well, I can't really. You do find Valmira, though. Yeah, I'm gonna stand protectively in front of Valmira, considering I just heard her yell, "Ah, I'm blind." <laughs> um. I'm gonna like hold on to the back of his like shirt, like lightly, but still, like just enough so I know that he's there. And I will fire off randomly <laughs> my second Eldritch Blast. So I'm assuming that's attack with disadvantage since I can't see him, but I know he's in here. Yeah. I'm just going to, like, fire one off on instinct. Just like, no look, just... Poof. Just like, like, the bolt knows where it's going. Uh, the shot makes contact with the desk down there and along the wall and just obliterates it. Poof. Does a ten hit? Flying everywhere. Yes. <laughs> it hits the desk. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you do. 
you do X amount of damage to the desk, and it is now out of HP, and the desk rolls saving throws. Death saving throws. Excellent. Excellent. That's what I like <laughs> it turned out it was a mimic desk all along. Wahahaha. Good. Good. I'd like to make a cheeky statement, but I'm pretty sure my turn's up, so... <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, you, Valmira, you go ahead and make your saving throw, constitution saving throw. I thought I'd do it after my attack if it can't really attack. I mean, unless you want to do something else, yeah. Um, I'm not going to say, especially being behind Gedlin, I don't want to attack with any that I have as a paladin. So, I'm fine with just throwing away my combat turns and doing saving throws until I get my sight back. Okay. Good on the enemy, you got me. Uh, you said it was constitution? Yes. Constitution saving throw. Uh, 17. You have regained your sight. I will give it back to you. Oh, I'm back. I'm back, Edlin. <laughs> it's a cool sound effect. Nothing can um, stop me now. I'm trying to find a good one for Eldritch Blast. All right. Uh, you hear some words muttered outside the door in Gnomish, and then all of a sudden inside of the room appears a large floating hand, which then shuts the door, locking it you inside... Sense. And disappears, leaving you. Wait, 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 wait! I heard him make a noise from outside the door that I just came in. This is correct. This son of a gun! It's not about to be sixty-two people, and I take my battle axe and I run up and I strike the door with it. You can fly up. You don't have to run. Either way, with divine smite. Just yeah, I will, uh, if you're gonna bust open the door. Actually, I don't know for a fact he's not in this room. He could have just, like, thrown his voice or something. He's a tricky little guy. Can I make a perception check to see if he's in this room? Absolutely. Any chance I could argue at advantage? I mean, you have dark, you have devil vision, so I, 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 I don't know. I feel like it's your odds okay. are pretty high already. <coughs> uh, how's the twenty-four do me? Yeah, you, uh, you don't see anything. You don't smell or hear anything in here. You don't feel anything. He tricked us. Um, has Valmir managed to bust down the door or open the door? I need some strength checks probably to bust right. that door down. You got this. Val, open this can of pickles for me. Open this jar of pickles for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are crazy. And then I open a can of pickles. <laughs> and then I eat and then I eat a pickle. And I give back the jar. It, it, was, it was a metaphor, but okay. I've determined that I want to call pickles pickled cucumbers from now on because we call everything else pickled something, and I just want to like throw people for a loop unexpectedly. Like, that here's your pickled funny. cucumber. I'm absolutely gonna do that. Like, you know, my <laughs> favorite thing is pickled cucumbers. Because we serve pickles with all of our food at work. So here's your pickled cucumber. <laughs> anyway, you definitely do that. See how many people get mad like, no, I ordered a pickle, damn it. <laughs> I don't want any pickled cucumbers. <laughs> and see how many people actually know that it's a cucumber. Oh. <laughs> Anywho, uh, Velmira, you're able to like really give it a solid whack, but your your was it a battle axe? Yep. Your battle axe hits and gets stuck inside of the door. Uh oh! I rip it out, and by and by being a halfling, it probably looks like I just jump on it, like I get on the handle and just. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> <terror>. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I love it. It did leave a crack in the door, though. You can see some light coming in from the torch outside. All right, I'm going to keep at it, but I guess it's somebody else's turn now. Well, we're effectively out of combat for the moment. Okay. Um, um, if we're out of combat, how long can I keep this light going, then? Because I base time off of moves. Uh, or should I just let it go? Would you... Just let it go, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm going to hold on to uh, Gedlin's shirt. Um, the, the voice outside says something else in, in Gnomish. I don't speak Gnomish. Um, we are going to together try to like fly into, shoot energy bolts at, and bash this door down. Because I am getting my money back, and I'm going to make this guy pay. <laughs> Alright, go ahead, I guess. Uh, what, what do you want me to roll? I can shoot some energy bolts at it. Uh, attack roll, I guess. Does a 22 hit the door? Yeah. <laughs> I just have the door set a certain like amount of hit points, I guess, at this point. Because I don't... I don't Nine for the points. first one. Okay. And... Velmir, why don't you roll a, 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 a damage roll for I your was first just great axe attack? Because I, sh- I forgot to ask you for that. Okay, so since I did have channeling divinity, that would be 12, 3 is 15. Okay, so 9 and a 15, is that is that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the door is definitely worse for the wear. It's not down yet. Um, I think can I make an extra attack to hit it again? Oh, yeah, go for it. Thank you. So that's 19 to hit. Okay. And eight plus three is twelve more damage. Thirty-six damage total. Okay, that you've done total. Uh, okay. Um, oh. a cloud of insects appears on your side of the door, and they start crawling up your legs and into your armor. Uh, this oh, is my uh, oh my god! Oh my god! I'm freaking out. We I'm losing my mind. Con saving throw. Like I'm starting to yell for Gedlin. I'm trying to take my clothes off. Fourteen. <sighs> oh wait, no, Four- plus three. That's seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. It's a spell. Take him out, and it'll stop. I just this <laughs> Uh, okay. no dice. You do not pass. So you're gonna take. Um. Six poison damage, and you're going to be forced to move a random direction. The dice say that you move one space north. Five feet north. Uh, you know, like, what's the word? Um, you, uh, just, like, as a reaction. Oh, nope. We want you right here. Right there. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, let's see. And... That's all other than you hear now in common uh, a voice that is mocking you. <laughs> yeah, this is terrifying. This guy's a serial killer. That's how he's killing everybody. I'm freaking out right now. Full on, like, outside of the curse. Like, the curse has caused me to, like, go through a panic attack, I feel. I want to Eldritch Blast the door again. <laughs> go for it. Does a 14 hit? Yes. Can I even miss if it's a door? It's another five points of damage. I I'm a, I effectively have it at like five. Really easy is the DC for hitting the door. <laughs> All right. Then 16 hits, so that'll be another 10 points of damage. <laughs> the door breaks down, and you see a goblin in front of you. Let's, uh... I'm just gonna temporarily move you outside, and it'll just look like that. That's good enough. Uh, you see a... Not a goblin, sorry. A gnome in front of you. 
and he is waving his hands uh, with his eyes closed, chanting something. Counterspell, punk. <laughs> We're back in initiative, slot. and I will have Gedlin start us off, I guess. Uh, if he's uh, yeah. if he's <laughs> casting a spell, I'm definitely going to cast counter spell. Okay. Uh, his spell drops, and he looks at you uh, with an angry, uh, very, very angry look on his face. Uh, he does have green skin after all. His hood is down. Weird, but okay. Uh, whose turn next? Dalmira can go if she wants, otherwise I'll have this guy go. I'll go. Smash him. I'm absolutely going to smash him. That's kind of like what I'm going for is a more uh, fluid initiative, so okay. you can choose when you want to go. I think it's just easier. Ooh, 26? Okay, that hits. What are you? No, I don't have to ask this my battle axe later, but I have two little boxes that offer me like I can roll for both. There's one, there are two d8 plus five, and the other is two d10 plus three. One is whether or not you're using uh, a, it as a two-handed weapon because it's versatile. So if you have a shield on, you can't do the bigger die. Otherwise, you should be doing the bigger. Oh, whoops, I've been... Hold on. I think you have a shield on, though. I do have a shield on. Okay, I've been doing it right then. Yeah. That makes okay. sense. It was a bigger prominent one, so I was confused. But, okay, wait. So now that's only eight points of damage, because I cannot do Channel of Divinity again. You can but smite, though. I can. Hold on. I'm going to do my egg, and then I'll smite on that one. Yeah, you're right. You want to crit um, troll with your smite. So it was eight, and then sixteen to hit that time. Does that hit? Let me see here. Six. Yeah. I'm going this case. Okay. Yes, it does. So that's another seven points of damage. And then with Smite, when you hit it, you can extend one spell slot to deal two weight extra with the idea with the eight each spell hired. I don't know how to keep track of that. So whatever. But I'm gonna use one first level spell. Doesn't matter. So that I could I roll two D eight and one D eight? Oh never mind. I keep sure. the question. Okay, just two D eight. I'll take a look at it. Plus, I just saw the answer to it, so no, I, I can't. I rolled it for myself. So, 8 plus 7, 15. That's 25 points of damage. Nice. Very good. To the gnome. Um, you can tell he's bloodied. I'm gonna take it to the gnome. All right, All right, now he's going to return fire. Um, he's going to... Belmira does a... Um, does a 16 hit you? Nope. Okay, he fired a... He cast Firebolt at you and missed, and then he turns tail and runs uh, to his full movement speed. Oh, can I still fly? I yep. So. Can I I'm going to chase him? after him. 10, 15, 20. Let's just grab him to the ground. 30. Just tackle him. 35. 40. Uh, and I will slash him with my sword twice. 
Rapier slash one. Does an 11 hit? Nope. How about a 23? Yes. Excellent. I will uh, slash the snot out of him. Oh, man, I should have booming blamed him. Oh, well. That'll be five points of damage, and he provokes opportunity attack if he leaves. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's checkmate. He's in checkmate now. <laughs> Bite him again, Val. Your turn, right. Valmira. So. I'm in the paste. Like turn I said, let's paste. just go down with one real quick. If I don't have to use smite. Is it 11 hit? That was a low roll. Nope. No, it does not. Whoops. I, for once I missed. Okay, so my extra... Get you all cocky for hit. once I missed. <laughs> 13? To that. 13 does not hit. Ah! <laughs> it's not been my day today. We can't so. always be. <laughs> You're right. All right, he's going to cast Firebolt at you again, Valmira. Oh my okay. gosh! Well, he got a 14, so I know he didn't hit. Nope, you both. Uh, he's going to take an opportunity attack from both of you. Okay, he did move, so go ahead and attack with opportunity if you'd like. It's a 13 hit. Nope. Try. Uh, what about a 14? Nope. Okay. I like how we're just slowly climbing the ladder. I went from 11 to 13 to 14. <laughs> well, I think like you know what his... It? You're probably going to find out what his uh, D, his AC is here pretty soon. I'm assuming at this point I would bet it's either 15 or 16. Don't be mad at me. You hear a sound. That was a little bit more crazy than I meant it to sound. Uh, and he dips out of sight down into the floor. Down oh, into yeah. the floor. Like there's a trap door, he like melds with the floor. Yes. That'd be fair to assume. The second he one or the first the one? Floor? The there's a trap door in the floor that melds with the floor. Okay. Uh, I will rush the trap door and try to open it or, or follow him down if it's if it's open. Okay, there's a ladder that goes down uh, down below. I'll just fly down and if I see him, I want to Eldritch blast him twice. How long does this flight last? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. And how big of a space do you need to be in to fly? It, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. It's not like you flap your wings. It's like... Right, I get that. It, it's not flapping. It's like floating around. It's just like it's a like a really narrow like ladder space and it's like really cramped. Even with... I am three feet tall. Oh, that's true. You're a halfling. Okay, so that makes a difference. Alright, you catch up to him on the ladder and he is still descending. Definitely going to hit him with two Eldritch Blasts. <laughs> oh, man. It's a 19 hit. Yeah. Good. All right, it's a little better. Nine points of damage. Just a 14 hit. Nope. Err. I will advance. I will continue to advance until he, he will... Basically, until he's going to ha provoke an opportunity attack if he continues to move. I want to get right up in his face. So I can slap him with my sword if he tries to get away. Swinging a sword inside of a 
base that's effectively three feet by three feet. Well, I'm only three feet. Yeah. All right. I guess that's. What works. if I just like? If we're in a narrow there, spot and I can be yeah. above him, I want to stab him if he tries to get away. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to like create an environment here where it's really hard to move and you can only move up and down and you just like have me beat every possible way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it just means I need to be more creative. All of a sudden... Uh, Volcanic eruption. We all die. Hooray. Um, something. Well, I guess it's Felmira's turn, isn't it? Yeah. That I it is. Know. Okay. <sighs> and. Let me look at my map. Um. Okay, I'm gonna head over there. So I can see the guy. I can never see him. Yeah, you know, I don't understand what's going on with the dynamic lighting. The dynamic lighting. Can I just say I come over here because I can... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, There's like some weird glitch on this map for some reason. It's all good. I guess I'm just going to continue with my general. We're going to pop him in the head. Give me a 21 hit. Yes. There's four points of damage, and I'm going to come in with the next one. That's 14 so far. Does not I got hit. the divine. Oh, no, that was... Oh, oh are that you... doesn't hit. No, it's 10. That was a 10. Okay, never mind. So only nine points of damage so far. Okay. And I guess that's what sucks about putting my divine smite all on my last one, because Right, if you miss, like it's like, yeah, you're I'm waiting done. to crit, so you can double that too. <laughs> but... but yeah, I got got on this one. Okay. <laughs> Remember, if you need to use a ranged spell, you do have guiding bolt, which is I a pretty good range. But I will look at it later. Okay. Right. Um, the gnome is going. Um, yes, perfect. He braces himself against the ladder so that he can free his hands. He mutters something, moves his hands, and you see a bubble of acid fly towards both of you. Uh, can I do a deck save to try and get out of the way? Yes, or dexterity saving throw save. or take full acid damage. So, yeah. Nope. Uh, what's your dex saving Ooh, throw? Okay, so 15. No, okay. no, yeah, 15. All right, you. 30 20. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> uh, the acid misses you, it falls down, rains on the, the gnome, and he takes. One poison. No, wait. Uh, three poison damage. <laughs> Probably not the best move on his part. Uh, and then uh, he does something uh, uh, that surprises you, and he lets go of the ladder and falls all the way down to the bottom. Uh, screaming the whole way and lands in a as a broken mess of bones and blood and flesh. Another one bites to this doo doo and another one doo 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 I will immediately fly down there and recover my coin pouch. Bring up the other stuff too so we can loot them. Okay. Uh, when I get down there, I will investigate the corpse. Uh, there's a pouch also, with a crystal area. in it. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a pouch with a crystal in it. There's your coin purse. Um, and then there's a letter. Uh, and it says, uh, basically it says, um, um, one second, please. 
Uh, Masnik, I have, I almost have all of the gold. I will, I will have it to you by the end of the fortnight. And signed, Chigorb. <laughs> oh, we killed the wrong guy. No, we definitely killed the right guy. We just gotta find this Chigor guy because he's got a lot of gold for us. No, 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 no. You killed Chigor. No, right, where he's trying to get it to Mavic. Yeah, he's he's got a. Le oh, I see what you're saying. I did not make it clear. He has the letter signed by him to deliver. Not that he received the letter. So this is right. Chigorb. He's collected a bunch of gold and he was going to bring it to Maz Nick. We caught him on the delivery. Excellent. Let's, uh. Okay, I'll. Like, Val, I don't want to cut his head off. Do you think this is enough to prove we killed him? I still think we need to find the magic guy to kill. Oh, that's right, huh? Well, this guy has yeah. a bounty after him. I mean, that's cool, too. We should definitely take all this in, yeah. Uh, the room, uh, to answer Zach's question, is rather inconsequential. It seems like it is a, like a, a smuggler's hideout uh, secret room. And so there's really nothing of interest in here. Except that there's like a barrel with some uh, preserved food in it, and some water, and a, a little, like a, like almost like a, a straw bed, so that if one had to hide mm -hmm. from the authorities for a while, they could come down here and manage to make it for a few hours. Okay, so this is a really hidey hole. All right, well, I will climb out since I'm guessing by the time I search him, it'll probably have been 10 minutes and the spell will fade. Yes. I think that'd be fair. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll take his little crystal. I'll take his, uh, I'll take my money back, which I will now be, like, tucking on an inside pocket, like, behind my breastplate or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I'll, I'll climb up the ladder and. It would be. Good news. It'd be fair to assume that this crystal is a spell focus. Yeah. Um, Ignore that. Sorry. And I think that's probably good for tonight. I. Um, <laughs> as usual, didn't plan anything. <laughs> no, 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 it was fun. Good. I think we did a lot today. Yeah, I thought we had a good, good session. I'm gonna give both of you 500 XP for all of that. Mm. Thank Hot you. Diggity. Yeah. Um. Thank you for joining me. Next week, I think what we'll do is, I think we'll pick up with your ship being ready. If that works. Uh, that way we can get back to the nautical stuff if. Unless you want to hang out in Mintarn. Oh, I never want to collect our bounty. Sounds good. Uh, I did not actually... Oh, crap. I just closed the page and lost the name of, of the guys that you were after. Shoot. My bad. No, I think we had him somewhere. Um, well, I lost his name, but I, I have the recording. <laughs> Yeah, I'm leaving after. <laughs> Why are you I'm eating the mic? Because <laughs> your your microphone that was atrocious. <laughs> Why am I eating the mic? <laughs> it, it it sounded like you were like talking with it in your mouth. Oh, sorry, I had it pinched <laughs> in my shoulder. I didn't realize it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, well, I hope you had a good time. Oh, yeah. That was that was okay. very, uh, very much uh, seat of my pants tonight. But I, I kind of, I really like it that way. I like it that way. Yeah, I had fun. You did well. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, we can we can wrap up the bounty stuff next week. I got a bunch of really cool books for 
in sea encounters and then also for the Chult. So I'm excited to dig into those. Cool. And, uh, okay. Lots of lots of fun stuff. I have like Voyage of the Dawn Treader uh, in my head, like uh, if you know that book, that sort oh, of yeah. stuff, like in mind. I'm not gonna rip it oh. off, but similar things. So I will not be upset if you turn me into a dragon. <laughs> you become Eustace. I would. I mean, I would. I would take being Eustace. If it meant that I also got to be a dragon. <laughs> Worth it. Um, two things. One, um, I will be out of town for three weeks starting Tuesday. Oh, so you're going to be gone next Tuesday? Yes. Um, I may, I'm probably, I am going to cancel Star Wars game two. Which oh, we were okay. going to do Monday, but I fly out early, early Tuesday morning. So I'm probably going to be last minute packing and all kinds of things. Okay. So you want to take a week, uh, well, not just one. Do you want to take a few weeks off? Um, if you guys want to, like, play with Jared, if he gets his character together, um, and you guys want to run, like, a duo thing just so he can kind of get used to your play style or, or, or whatever or if you guys want to wait I'm cool with that too but like don't hold the whole phone up for me for three weeks because I'm traveling it's okay if we do it, it gives me time to like, rest and figure some stuff out um, I'm used to okay. that schedule because I used to do it once a month for my Stargate game okay which, like it would have been great but like people would show up like once every three months, which was annoying. Not yeah. fun. If I was gonna run a game, a game that only met once a month, I would want to run it for like eight hours a session. Right. I was because otherwise it would take forever. Oh man, we would get like three hours in, and everybody's like, "I'm tired. I want to go." Like really? I spent a month building this for you. I don't want to spend three hours playing. Let's uh, like at least four. Good night, right, like if you meet if you meet every week, three hours is fine. But like, yeah, when when I first started playing uh, Star Wars, the group I played with, we played for eight hours every Sunday, and it was a blast. I bet we like we would make a whole day of it. Like like we would take turns. Like it was so it was me and Jake, and then we'd go over to my buddy Richard's house. Uh,